Welcome back to the kickoff. Today I am joined by Joey, Marvin, Craig, and Josh. The day after uh, Newcastle won big time on Tyneside. We're, we're just watching the end of this uh, Spurs Aston Villa game. Uh, Craig, how, how are you feeling watching this? Because you played well, but it's not the result you wanted. No, no. Oh, his, his hood's up. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> It's that kind of mood today. Have you seen that meme where like Kermit has the hood and yeah, like, looking it really in feels that way. Yeah, I mean, like, look, life comes at you fast in the Premier League, yeah. man. Like, we were cruising a few weeks ago, and now this we're looking at our third defeat in a row, two in a row at home, oh. and had that amazing record of like 18 months never losing at home with Celtic that he brought here, and it was going what? Well. Look, things have gone wrong, man. That Chelsea game. So much went wrong in that game, but the biggest thing was the injuries. It wasn't even the loss. Just losing all the players we've lost now. Benton Cole has been injured in this game as well. We've got City next. Any word when we get those big players back, though, with Madison and the like? Madison Van Der January. And yeah. the Christmas period is, the, like, the hardest period. Romero's got one more game suspension after this, which is Man City. So we're looking at Davis and Rao against Man City, Brian. Do you know what it is, though, right? After against Man Haaland. No, but here's the thing is... What I don't know, like tell me if I'm wrong, lads, but for football fans, right, these kind of losses I feel are acceptable. Like you, you haven't played shit, you haven't not turned up, you literally have key players injured, and still, to my surprise, you've actually played Ange style football. Mm. You've made no, playing football. The identity no, but I thought pull Madison out there, the we'll deck of cards it, it'll fall, right? But it it hasn't been like that. And I just think that what Ange is showing, even in these games, is look, when we get our players back, when we invest in the squad in January, you still got what fifty million left over from the Kane sale alone. Mm. Um there's there's things there's good things coming. So it's like and this is what I had with the Newcastle defeat against Bournemouth when I made a video like backing Eddie Howe going, Yeah, like but we can't just be we can't always be Oh, and I know a lot of football fans on YouTube like to throw the baby out with the bathwater, but mm. sometimes we just have to fucking suck it up. And I yeah. think like Spurs fans can now do that, at least knowing we've actually got a good manager here and, all right, we're going to take a few L's, but something's building that wasn't build, building beforehand because, fuck me, under Conte um, and Mourinho and that, we didn't see anything like the way you have played today. Even. Yeah, so, I, I hear you. I, I, I'm not, like, down in that. In the bigger scheme of things, I'm happy with the manager. I am happy with the football yeah. we're playing. And there are injuries. But, yeah, it's just like... Ooh, you fucker! You know, he scored there. Just knowing it's three losses in a row and we got Man City next is depressing, man. Yeah. We could have four losses in four games in a row after going unbeaten for like 10 games. Mm. It's, not, it's not nice. And then, and then seeing them top of the league <laughs> just, <laughs> make, just hurt, makes it hurt why, even more. Why are you going to talk about us like we're an estranged member of your family? We, no, we, you're our rivals. That's, that's how I'm talking. We're not about really rivals, guys. to be fair. We're just, we are rivals. You know, you live, you're, you're nearby. You're like we're North neighbor. London rivals and it, and it, it hurts even more. He was going to say living so. in the shadow of one. <laughs> <laughs> in the beginning <laughs> of that sentence, I thought, it's a bit early my, for this. Like. My lips started to move. <laughs> no, no, but I, I do think here yeah, that like, it's, it's fine margins because I tell you now, I was watching the Arsenal game and I was tweeting a storm because I was like, look, this is going to be one of those days. You know when you just feel you're watching your team and the movement says, this is not going to go well, is it? Like, Arsenal like, fans have felt like that a lot this season. Yeah, it just because we're not, we're not blowing anyone away. We're winning games, which is good. We just Winning is fine, but we're not blowing teams away. And I think like Watford, but Brentford was a really tough watch because like things were just happening that were just telling us they ain't going to go our way. Yeah. Two goal line clearances, by the way. Mm. Like it just, it was set up for us to lose that game. So for us to win is in the 89th minute is like that really good feeling. And it, I guarantee you, if we went five more minutes without scoring, I'll be here feeling heavy. Because like we got mm. Champions League, you know, we just came back off the back of international football, which is the worst type of football ever to watch. I want to come back with a win. I want momentum. I want quick games. You've also had a Havertz goal, which kind of, you know, in It's theory, like two goals. <laughs> it, it, it kind of gives a little bit of like, oh, thank fuck for that, because we have spent a fuckload of money on him. And still, it hasn't, he hasn't set the world on fire. So that justifies some of that. Shows our tech, all right, we haven't made a complete fuck up here. I mean, not that I'm buying into that myself. I still think I'm still on the fence. At, but but, do, but do you know what's but, funny? He's a large reason why we have won quite a few games. If you think about mm. even the uh, Man City game, yeah, he had the assist. He had, he? he had, he had the assist, and he's like, he's ma he's allowed us to get out of the high press. He's been a target man for the high press mm. for for every game that he's been in. That's been a massive deal for us because last year, if like you know a Brighton or a Brentford just high pressed us. We were stuck trying to play out through them. And if it didn't work, we would get beaten. So for us to be able to have someone to knock the ball to has helped us quite a lot. It's a weird tactical benefit for 65 million. That's I'm, not, the point. I'm not selling it yeah. as like the complete amazing no. answer, but I am very, very clear that 
I actually am glad that he's here. It, it, it's not I'm that glad it, he's there it, too. It, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's not that he's terrible and it's not that he has no use. It's just that what you do get isn't 65 million quid no. worth of player. But um, we'll get on to uh, Chelsea yesterday um, because <clears throat> coming into that game, speaking to the lads, you, you guys obviously seen how many injuries we had. Then the, the momentum seemed to be shifting with Chelsea where the, one of the best performances of the season against Man City, finally someone went like punch for punch with them and really gave them a, a good go and you're thinking follow that up then mm. it didn't happen it didn't no. <laughs> it was one of those ones before the the game started joe and i were joe and i were feeling very confident we were thinking we're getting some of our best players back we're building some momentum we're getting some continuity we did feel that there was some desire and some fight from the the squad and then the game happens it kicks off mm. and all of those all of that positivity all of that desire that we thought we were we were going to get it just disappeared. Very quickly. Like over, like literally in the first few minutes, you were on top of us straight away. And look, St. James's Park is a really hard place to go. And we knew that was going to be a tough game. But we made it so much easier for Newcastle. They, mm. they made us look rubbish, but we also made them look very, very good. I think it was a combination of the two things. I think Newcastle were really good. We were really poor. And I think also we, we're all guilty of buying into the narrative around matches. So the narrative going into this where Chelsea were hitting form and Newcastle were absolutely riddled by injuries. Actually, we saw that the squad they put out was... The, shouldn't say the squad, the starting 11 was fairly strong. You know, you've got players that aren't first team starters like Jamal Lascelles, who's come in, but has done a really, really good job. I was looking at Liv Ramento out of out of position, playing at left back, a right footed player. And I was thinking when you look at Rhys James and Cole Palmer down that side, we can cause some damage. And we just didn't do anything. We just didn't have the opportunity. We were smothered by Newcastle. We, we couldn't really get on the ball, you know. I felt like we won the midfield battle. Massively. Mm. Massively, massively. And when you, when you think of that, you've got, you know, Lewis Miley in there and you've got, you know, people that are coming back from international duty halfway across the world and whatnot. Joel Linton and Bruno. It's, it's a massive, so at, at massive what, at achievement. At what point do we um, investigate Enzo? Is this not yet? Or is I, think, I think there's no, a little think, bit of that. I think, actually, uh, there's a bit of that going on already. Mm. But, uh, but again, this is what I... I always try and stress that there is middle ground in football. Like, it's not black and white. So we can say, right, Enzo at the moment is not performing to to the standard we believe he can, pe can perform to. Mm. That doesn't necessarily mean, oh, well, you know, he's a complete flop then. There is that middle ground. So I do think that we're watching Enzo at the moment. And myself and Josh have spoke about this a few times. We've been, uh, we've been looking at Enzo's performances, especially when we're previewing games, thinking we do need to see a bit more from you now, you know, like we really do. Because what doesn't help him is the fact, and going on yesterday's showing it doesn't look good, but in games gone by, you've got Conor Gallagher there who didn't cost a penny, came through the academy. And he's performing to the highest standard out of anyone in that midfield. So I think it's a bit of pill to take, especially for the fact that, you know, we look at the way we played yesterday. There was no fight, no intensity. And Poch has said the exact same thing after the game. So is there like a then, because then Caicedo got dropped for Chukwemenko. Is that right? No, Uka no. Chukwu. Uka Chukwu, and, and he sorry. didn't get dropped. He was. Uh, he has a small injury, like a slight. Injury. And he was. He was. He, no, he actually was late back. And he was. So from international duty, I think he was yeah. two days late than the rest of the players, which meant he hadn't trained with the team at all. But but let me. Apart from all of this, give it context. If he was playing, we wouldn't have won either. So I'm not. I'm not saying. But then that's isn't, the isn't that we so? So win. isn't that a problem? And the fact that your two one hundred million pound players mm. could be playing together and you wouldn't be able to beat Newcastle. And by the way, I like Newcastle, so it's not like an anti Newcastle rant. But you're, we, you're... We, we were depl we had three goalkeepers on the bench. Yeah, they I had saw that. Like three hundred million pounds worth of players on their bench. Yeah. Mm. So like, um, we, we I saw three players yesterday mm. who I've never seen before come off the bench. Same. I don't know they who were, they are. They were pretty good though. No, no, great, great lads. <laughs> Love them. <laughs> they're, they're, they're my boys, right? And we, Lewis Miley. Who literally can't afford to buy a pen? Can't he can't even manage to buy a pen because he's eight, not even eighteen years old yet. He's not eighteen till next year, yeah. mm. and he's the one who's r calmly rolling the ball in behind these three Chelsea defenders, like they're not even there. Yeah. The pass he made was the sort of pass that we were hoping to see from Enzo yesterday. Yeah. Exactly. When we brought him in with that sort of passing ability and the ability to be able to take the pressure out of a game and spot the ball there, and then the finish. The finish to be, to be able to get not the easiest ball and Alexander Isaac get it out of his feet and then put it past Sanchez. That's exactly what we were hoping Jackson would do yesterday. So I think I think one thing is there was a bit of a mirror held up to us yesterday to go look. This is where 
in the grand scheme of things, maybe you are at the minute, which is sort of, you're going to win some matches, you're going to lose some matches, but there's not going to be that consistent level. I'll tell you the good thing about being an up and down team like this, right? And a, and a team that blow hot and cold. Here's the good thing. Let me start with the bad thing. The bad thing is when you win a couple of matches or matches that feel like wins, like the Man City game, yeah, there's no guarantee the game. you then, and the Arsenal game, there's no guarantee that you then continue with a bit of form. That's the bad thing. The good thing is when you lose a match, like the one to Newcastle, there's every opportunity you then go and win the next one. So you don't have to feel too too down on okay. it for too long. I personally, right, so we've battered plenty of teams at St. James's and will continue to. So I don't think that I look at Chelsea now and think they fuck their finish. But I think Pochettino is feeling the pressure now and mm. for a couple of reasons. So one of the key things from the game that hit me was the lack of discipline within the Chelsea side. Yeah. We, we could talk about Rich James for a start. That was ridiculous. Um, two very soft yellow cards that were needless. Like just, yeah. They're not what, captain well. You're already, you've already lost the game. What you're pulling, him, uh, pulling on uh, Gordon Shirt, he's going to go down, you're going to get booed. Mm. But also, um, when you look at the goals, like you say, um, Isak had half an hour to turn and shoot yep. in the box. You then got an unmarked Jamal cells you're then giving the ball to us mm. for Joe Linton's goal and um, and I think mentally there was a switch off for Gordon's goal and then you're thinking right the lack of discipline Pochettino goes to the press conference he says Newcastle weren't actually that good we were just really easy to beat mm. which is putting all the pressure on his players blaming the players for me you talk about that and you think, mate, you've, you weren't even allowed on the dugout because your lack of discipline as a manager yeah. has gotten you in trouble. Yeah. So they're in your image right now. They're not switched on right now. And um, for me, for him to play the throw the players under the bus card... It never goes well. Before December. We're not in December yet. Yeah. That tells me... Because you don't throw the players under the bus unless you're like, fuck me, I've got to do something. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's in fact, very, you just never do. No, no you, it's a last resort. Mm -hmm. To blame the players is the very... And you'll see... Mikel Arteta, when he, when he had the game against Newcastle, mm. he went for the referee. Yeah, yeah. His team weren't good enough to beat us that nope. day. Were mm. they, should we have won? That's debatable. But they weren't as good as they could have been Arsenal. Mm. But he blamed the referee because he thought siege mentality, I've got to think. It's but, Alice Ferguson's but, playbook, one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, but, but, but for Pot, Poch, he's thinking, fuck me. I've got to give the, these lot the hairdryer right now. And I'm thinking, it's not even December and you're pulling that cord. Yeah. You must that, be worried. What, what does that tell you about what's happening inside then? If it's you not have good. to... Project that, onto that, the that, players already. That, and look, they're 10 points behind Spurs, which for all um, Chelsea have had more upheaval than Spurs have. Mm. That f is something where you've just got to look at it and go, you spent a billion, that should not be happening. Yeah. Um, and as much as we have to give Poch more time because there's so many new players, I just think the early signs are worrying. Mm. They yeah. should be. I think what uh, the reason why I'm not that mad that he did that yesterday where Poch went out and slagged off the players, I, I actually quite respect it in a weird way. The reason why I like it is because you've got a very, very young team and they almost do need to be disciplined, almost like that school teacher mentality. We see we see other well, managers publicly. do this. Yeah, but we see other, other managers do this all the time where they sort of call them out and sort of go to the young players. You, they go, you need to front up here. You need to be men. You need to be leaders on the pitch. And you've just said it. Our captain has been petulant, got sent off for a stupid reason. And that was a, f uh, you know, he's still a young player. It's a folly of youth. He needs to learn and he needs to set an example. That's mm -hmm. the captain we're talking about, let alone every other single player that's on that pitch. Mm -hmm. You see a player like Miley that you have, he was immense yesterday. He was very, very stable, very secure. He did all the things that he needed to. He did what the assignment that he had. Mm -hmm. But isn't, that that clear. isn't that a coaching thing, do you feel like? Because I feel it's, like it's ev everyone that shows up for Newcastle, again, even players like Shah, who we were like, are done at here, mm -hmm. we're under Bruce. He's come in and he looks like a completely different player. Isn't that culture? Isn't that in coaching environment? Why is that not possible for all of the great talent that Chelsea this is, have? This is the one thing, and, and I think this is the reason why I do class Eddie Howe as an elite manager, and I do think he, he's incredibly underrated and people don't give him as much credit as he deserves. And I shouted this out quite extensively yesterday because he has got those players who on paper, don't deserve to be anywhere near the Champions League. Yeah. And, and I don't think that's unfair to say. I got a lot of stick for saying that yesterday, but I don't necessarily think that's unfair to say, you know, player by player there, they, they don't deserve to be right up not, there in not the Champions Not in terms League of places. talent. No, no. no. And yeah. that's the point. We, we, I, I'll tell you, I, I fucking watch these pricks. Do you know what I mean? I've been screaming at half of them yeah. and now they've made me eat my words because mm. they have worked hard. But when you said about Pochettino, you said, I'm not mad at it. I, what I mean more is, is 
if 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 I'm you and Joey, I'm thinking I absolutely understand why you're saying what you're saying. I understand that you feel that way, but to publicly do it and not do privately it. do it tells me you're fucking worried about your job. Yeah. Because for me, a manager will only throw his players under the bus publicly when he's like. I'm at a stage now where I've got fu I'm I'm in danger here. He's done everything so you better he, he can do. Yeah, and that that's a, it's 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 the last card you play, and mm. he's playing it before December. Mm. So that tells me he's worried. What I like about Pochettino though is he do, he doesn't uh, chat shit in these press conferences. Like he he is very true to himself, and if he believes something, he will say it. Yep. And and I feel that in the modern game, you have to respect that. But mm. like there are a lot of people that will you know do that stage mentality, blame the rest, and I think that's such a cheap card to play these days. Mm. I think it's actually. Thanks. Really Really poor. I think it's just poor. I think it's just poor. I hate it when people blame the referees, especially when their team are, are playing really badly. It, it, and this it's is why. Tired, isn't it? But we need. But we need to call out like our team yesterday was rubbish. Yeah. Every single one of them. And I was going yesterday and thinking who was a player that stood out as being a decent performance. And I couldn't name Sterling one. player. Sterling gave a lot. Nah, but he. The, and this is the thing. Moment we, we of you look brilliance. About, yeah. A moment part. of brilliance. But then you look at the rest of the game. He wasn't tracking back. In fact, a lot of the goals came from down that side. Mm. And the key thing that we've been saying about Sterling. And this is why I like Mudrick a lot. I'm going to say it again. <laughs> oh, no, I'm yeah. Mudrick's key, you know, fanboy here. But I'm going to say Mudrick does track back. Mudrick is a player that would support his He actually back. was threatening Whereas, when he came on, to be fair. And, and all, not, not just from an attacking perspective, from a defensive perspective. And there were so many examples yesterday. And I really watched this because, you know, in the highlights and stuff, you only see Raheem going forward and attacking because that's, you know, where you see him as a wing, winger. But you don't see him tracking back. Ever. Mm. And that's a key thing that we miss out on. Mate, the, and it's tactical discipline. Who, he's meant to be the, one of the oldest players in the team. He's meant to be the one who is one of the, the better talent, players. He's, he's the, he's highest, the highest earner. He's meant to be there representing Chelsea Football Club. And he's one of the worst did examples. You, did you feel like after wise. the goal, he was just not a non-event? Because yeah. he just disappeared. Mm. But, this is, yeah. but this is why, like, and, and again, we get stick for this. Because I say... He's so inconsistent. I don't know if he's going to do it at the top level. I would actually be happy if he did get sold in the summer. And a lot of people go, fucking hell, he's just scored against City. He scored against, you know, he scored all these goals. And you go, how, how dare you do it? And I go, well, the reason is, is because he doesn't support his team. Okay. And I no, want team I, players. And, and I tell you what, watching Newcastle yesterday, you see that they're a team. And, and I don't want individuals at Chelsea Football Club anymore. I want players that are there that, that, as a that, group. That's a whole new rebuild, rebuild by the way, to do that. I, I have another question here. Do, do you feel held by your manager? Like, I, what I mean by that is, like, with Arteta, I think about that 10-game run, run over December that he, he literally saved his job by beating Chelsea's Lampard or Lampard's Chelsea. Um... And I felt like from the first press conference when he came in and he was just like, standards. And we have to want everyone to give 100%. I felt quite held by him. Like, I, I, I believed in him because of the language he gave, yeah. the body language. Do you feel the same? I love about, it. And, you know? Yeah, I do. And that's why, that's why I don't mind him slacking the players off in the press conference because I feel like he's just true to himself. Mm. And I feel that he would be saying that in private and public. He's, yeah. a, he's the same guy. He's a, you know, he's a straight bat. And also, he does a fantastic piece of content with the club where he literally just go... These are the standards that we want to get. This is the objective that we so, want to so do. We it, want to be better. In your mind, is is his um, job more secure than the player? So, like, it's more likely that they're going to get rid of players who aren't doing what he wants than he's going to go because he can't get... Uh, they, they, don't, they don't have long contracts. Yeah, it will be, be very difficult to offload them. But also, I feel that Poch is one of those players, that he can, uh, one of those managers, that he can slag off a player and not cut ties to them. I don't think it's mm. a, a, an Eric Ten Hag level where mm. he'll have a go at you can and, then, just you're, and, then, you're, and then you're done. Because I did an interview with Kieran Trippier where he said, if anything... Poch could have put an arm around him more at times when he played for him. However, I think Poch mentally had made his mind up on Kieran Trippier at that point. Right. Um, so maybe if you're in his plans, yes. Yeah, yeah, maybe yeah. not if if no. One thing I will say though, uh, you've been you've been really like brutally honest there, and I think you're bang on. Like, the reason Newcastle ran over Chelsea is because we were a unit and we play for each other and we run our hearts out. And there's too many players in that team right now who aren't doing the dirty work. Whereas Joe Linton mm. is a mount, man mountain, for example, and, and will do that sort of stuff as well as push forward. Um, and Almiron and players like that. Almiron will do the kind of stuff that Sterling just can't be asked yeah. with. Mm. It's, it, but all of this takes time. Like You've had a, a settled um, yep. side, a settled management system, coaching staff for a, for a long time. We're building that. Can I just, How can, can we I build... Just put something to you, though? Hard work doesn't take that long. No, and, I, and I think for me, when I look at Chelsea... When you it's look at when Eddie Howe team. took over Newcastle, mm. pretty quickly, and I'm, I'm, he should Pochettino should be held to that standard because he's had far more investment. He's achieved a lot in his career. He's been in the Champions League. 
And it shouldn't take that long in terms of to get the standards of hard work up. Mm. It's one thing getting everyone playing together and can Cole Palmer click with this player, but you know, to, to see them down tools a bit, um, it, and it, worryingly to say before December, and look, you guys finished 12th last season, you're one point above 12th now, and you've spent a hell of a lot of money. So for me, I think Pochettino is under pressure, and, um, and I think we've seen from Todd Bowley, he's not afraid to pull the trigger. Any Chelsea manager is under pressure 24 7. From mm. the moment you arrive, regardless if you're Pep Guardiola, Jose Mourinho, mm. Conte, whatever manager you are, you are in the fire at Chelsea. There's never a situation where I've ever gone that Chelsea manager is comfortable. You know, we sacked Ancelotti when he'd won the FA Cup and the league. But it was supposed to be different with this new project, this new idea. It was supposed to be mm, less reactionary, wrong. more long term. But results are results. And I mean, do you guys think uh, there's any scenario that Poch can lose his job this season? I don't think I don't think there would be. I don't think there's any listen, you say is there any scenario? Of course. If we go on a run now and we don't win for six games and all of a sudden we're in the bottom four, bottom five in the Premier League, then there's always that possibility. But when I when I give you my answer on whether I think there's any scenario, I've obviously then got a counter in the fact that I don't think that's gonna happen in mm -hmm. terms of us going on a really bad run and ending up down there. What I would say is we again can't go on what the ownership are gonna do because Okay, bearing in mind, they sacked Tuchel, but that was never their man in the first place. Fair enough. They got Graham Potter in. Now, I would sit um, sort of maybe thinking, okay, Potter was never going to be the right man for the job. He didn't really have the charisma to be a Chelsea manager. Some people might not agree with that. That's my opinion. With Pochettino, I do think the tools are there and I do think he's the right man. And I do think that he's definitely got the fan back in. Like, I see the interaction on my videos when I'm talking about it. Everyone pretty much agrees with with what he had said. The problem here is the fans aren't the ones in the dressing room, and the fans aren't the one on the ones on the pitch. So if potentially he has risked, you know, putting players' noses out of joint and losing players by saying what he said, then that's then then a problem. I think the fan base would look at it and go, well, if you're the sort of player that can't take the tiniest bit of constructive criticism, maybe we don't want you playing for this sort of club. So I do think that with the fans. Potch has got grace and I think Potch has got time and I think everyone's still invested in the projects and I don't see it changing all that quickly. Can I answer what Todd Bowley would do? No. The, the reason I'm saying that is because I'm looking at the clubs around you, Brentford, Wolves, you know, Crystal Palace, they're, they're in a similar points range and you think how much money he's spent and ultimately Bowley is a businessman and he's made an investment and if mm. you, you can only give it enough, so much time, right? Um, Rhys James, we, I mentioned him before, uh, poster boy or a captain? What, what is he? Because um, we rate him as a footballer, mm. but has he got the capability to go on and be a leader? Because some players are great footballers, but they're not capable of being leaders. I think absolutely he's capable of being a leader. Like if you, for me, I always want the uh, the captain to be one of the best players in the in the team, let alone a leader and everything else, right? And I feel you can learn to be a leader. I think there's people around him that can can grow him and can improve. I mean, Beckham did. And I, yeah. and I want him and I want him to lead by example from his performances. And I, and Reese can 100% do that. He's been an idiot in the game yesterday. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing around that. I I use the word that he was he was being dumb. The decisions that he made were stupid. Mm -hmm. Like he has to put his hands up and he has by the way. He has put his hands up and said, "Look, I made a mistake here. It was stupid, petulant, moronic." You know, it's one of those things. But we we know as Chelsea fans and this is what everyone forgets here with Reese. He's come up from the, you know, the earliest possible opportunity to be at Chelsea. He's been there. He's been through the entire academy system. He knows Chelsea more than any anyone else there at the club. So especially when they when they're coming in, management staff, new uh, board staff, they don't know Chelsea like Reese James knows Chelsea. So for for anyone from the outside to say, <laughs> oh, Reese doesn't deserve to be Chelsea captain, I th I feel it's very very hypocritical. If you if Arsenal or Man United had a player like that that had come through their academy and had been there in every level, who had worked under Sir Alex well, Ferguson, well, who had worked under Wenger, you would go, we are going to back you 100 He's never but what, but what, what, what is Chelsea if you change your owner, your leadership team, your coach, your head coach, and pretty much all of your players? What is the Chelsea that is that he knows? It's the, the academy. Fa the fan it's the base, academy. the people, the yeah. academy, everyone around the club. That doesn't change in yeah. terms of the, 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 the culture of the club, in terms of the support and everything like that. And he'd have grown up around Chelsea fans, everyone supporting the club. And ultimately, he might be the last of a dying breed there, but he does know what the John Terrys of the world knew Chelsea meant and Frank Lampard and those sort of players so there. are so. you of the belief that the the soul of Chelsea is the fan base? So the fan base can carry on the traditions of what happens in the club 
by year by year because they know it because they've been watching no of course ages. not because otherwise you wouldn't have teams like Leeds playing in the second division and, and some of the fallen giants we've seen and stuff like that I look at but, I, but I, yeah but I am of the belief that we can have a captain that understands that fan base and understands what we want and then can set the standards going off of that we yeah. got, I'm, gonna, we, I'm just going to round, round this up uh, Pochettino yeah does he make it to next season? Yes or no? Yes. yes. He, he does, but he'll be gone by next Christmas, I would believe. Next Christmas? Oh. George Michael? No, nah, he's there. I've said this before. I, I obviously, I'll let you look speak. I'll, I'll keep mm. it quick, but I told you, if you've got young players and you're building something new, if you look at the landscape right now of managers, there's no one better than Pochettino for these group of players, uh -huh. in my opinion. Show me a manager. Who? Arteta. Jo Josh? We're talking about managers Look, got four we years. Were, we, we were playing Spurs. We, we absolutely demolished them in terms of the result. And we played Man City, one of the best teams in basically the world that we've ever seen. And we went toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. And now we've had one bad result and people are questioning him. It's a joke. He'll be there until the, until the season. Okay, ends. well, I, I am worried for him because I just think it, it, it needs a, a bit of a dramatic change. And right now I'm seeing one step forwards, one step backwards a bit too often. I, I agree with what Craig said, like young players. He is probably one of the best guys you're going to find right now. But I think, you should, I think there's a reason why he's saying what he's saying. And I think he's worried himself. Who's gonna, who are they going to replace him with? But that's what exactly. I mean. We're the, talking about who, who's going to come in and do a better job with these young players mm. in this landscape right but now. That, that, but sometimes though, like that question doesn't need to be answered because things get so bad that you're yeah. like, look, you're fucking not working, mate. But, but then you also, just get in a cycle. There, uh, you bring uh, someone no, in and he gets it's, sacked it's, as well. Uh, you bring uh, yeah. let's, person let's, in. It's also let's, their job to know who that person should be, could be, if that ever does happen. Yeah. If they don't have a short list of four potential coaches, then they're failing their club. But anyway. you know what? It, it was like with uh, Potter, right? It got to a point where we were all like, this guy's toast. We know yeah. it. But, but we're also, just waiting for the right moment. Who who then can you actually attract? Mm. Like, let's let's face reality. A lot of the time we get called we get called delusional as Chelsea fans yeah. we're not attracting managers from that A-list anymore we, no, we are I, just about to kick off I, I, I just want to let you know we are going to talk about the game don't worry we're going to get on can we just do a bit on Newcastle I just want to have one, my moment yeah, yeah, come I, on, I'm you calling us it. the Geordie vampires because when we smell blood it's over. We mm -hmm. smash teams. When we get when we get the bit between our teeth, and look, I'm spitting facts, by the way, because there's no team uh, in English football who's smashed uh, four in against opposition as regularly, or four or more, as regularly as we have in the last uh, over a year. I mean, you know what we're like, well, like, even PSG, we were a victim of it. And uh, it just was good for us to, when we did get that goal, you, you, that, that, that third goal, Thiago was a, a fucking asleep for it, Thiago Silva. That was a horrendous mistake. But it came from the persistence of Joe Linton. The, mm. We want that, but we're not going to sit and rest on, all right, we've got one back. Uh, we were in, uh, in Chelsea's face, and that made me feel great. Um, and looking at, uh, I've written a couple of the players down. I want to talk about Jamal Lascelles. I've been banging on about Jamal Lascelles saying he's better than uh, Harry Maguire for a long time. And everyone's given this Harry, Harry Maguire fucking... Uh, you know, Cinderella Man story, a what a comeback. And yeah, like, don't get me wrong, he has been better. But Jamal Lascelles has low key just crept back in the Newcastle team, clean sheets, clean sheets, scoring goals, leader. Like, everything people are giving Harry Maguire credit for, Jamal Lascelles is doing that and better. And no one gives him any credit. So I have to give the big lad a shout. Joe Linton was a, a, an absolute powerhouse. Anthony Gordon is one of the best signings we've ever made. And we, we, by the way, were screaming. We did fan protests so that we didn't sign him. Yeah, well, he's now got um, five goals and three assists in, what, 10 or 11 Premier League starts mm. the season. And it's not just about that. It's He reminds me of uh, Craig Bellamy for Newcastle back in the day of, like, mm. setting the tone, getting in the opposition's face. And for all Reese James kept Doku quiet the week before, Anthony Gordon had him on toast. I mean, he literally got him sent off. Uh, he, he had him, and that, that's it, for me one of the best fullbacks in world football, Reese yeah. James, when he's on his game. But there was a reason he was off his game. It wasn't just because he was off his game, it was Anthony Gordon. And for Gareth Southgate to continually leave this kid out, it, it, it's going to become quite embarrassing because Copy to say he's outperforming Marcus Rashford now is an understatement. And I know one, one, a bit of form doesn't justify it and it's going to take time, but I think Anthony Gordon is the real deal. Mm. Um, and uh, I've got to say, uh, Isak was ice cold and Miley. Uh, I've been banging on about Miley since I seen him in preseason. Ironically, he kind of outshone Enzo in a Chelsea game in preseason. Yeah, I think he did it again. And to look at him at 17 years old, um, and Bruno Gimmerich was interviewed by uh, Radio Newcastle, and he said, uh, That lad is going to be a star because at 17, I was shit. 
<laughs> and this kid is right now playing alongside Bruno, looking, yeah, like he just belongs there. And I hope he's absorbing that like a sponge. Like he needs to be learning from Bruno and these kind of players. Can, um, we, can we just also just give a shout out to Eddie Howe? Because I don't know, yeah. I don't know what he's been able to do with that squad. Because as we say, mm. you know, man to man talent, they don't deserve to be as high as they are. Mm. But my God, he's done something to get them firing, playing all together, playing as a team. He's done incredibly well. I've but never known anything doesn't like it, it. Doesn't it make you feel like there's more gems in management who are just being missed? Because we looked at him at Bournemouth and we was like, oh, he's good. And, but nobody really thought of him as a top, top tier manager. And then it was almost like when he fell out of that club, it was almost like a bit of an underwhelming appointment for you. And he's actually been brilliant. Mm. And I think some people, some, there are some managers who are doing really good stuff at a level with very little resources who given a chance of a bit of a budget could do really, really good things. And yeah. I think he's been brilliant. The thing I want to credit him most of all is, you know, he had that attacking style. We're underway, by the way. He had that attacking style at Bournemouth, but he was known as, oh, well, he can't set a defence up though. But, but reality is like, look at the budget he was working yeah. with. Yeah. He then went away and studied the likes of uh, Simeone's management style, uh, literally trained with them. And now when you look at the Newcastle defence, for me, you know, Ch Ch Chelsea haven't been necessarily great attacking all the time this season, but this was the most disjointed Chelsea have looked this season. Yeah. And again, it's not just because Chelsea were disjointed, it's because we defend as a team. And um, I, you know, Terry Venables died, RIP, yeah. people were talking about Rest what a too. great tactical um, manager we had as an Englishman there, saying that he was the last great tactical English manager. And I thought, aye, he, he probably was until Eddie Howe. And, and that, mm. that, that says a lot that I'm putting Eddie up there with The him. man management as well. Like yeah. you mentioned Jamal Lasseau's there, right? We've, we've had plenty of players at Chelsea coming out the lineup and then coming back in and they never really come back in and perform to a high level. Yeah. And part of it is, you know, almost like ring rust. But the other side of it, you can say, is the morale of being on the sidelines. Jamal Lassell gets his opportunity, comes back into the first team and performs to such a high level that you have to look at it and go, well, that's perfect man management yeah. by Eddie Howe because you've somehow found the way to keep him sweet while he's not playing. And then all of a sudden he comes back in and he's performing to a really high level. That is yeah. so true. And I, I, I have criticised Jamal Lasalle probably more than any other human on the planet, right? And yet I'm sitting there watching <laughs> him going, you have absolutely stunned me. Mm. You And I, the reason being, and uh, Joe Willock spoke about this when he came back from injury, he goes, every single day I was out injured for whatever, however, four months Every day the manager spoke to me. Mm. It wasn't like out of sight, out of mind. It's, are you all right? How are you doing? Like, and he praised uh, Eddie Howe. I mean, Eddie Howe must be doing a lot of talking because he's got a lot of fucking injuries yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah. But um, yeah, I, I completely agree. And that felt like a defining moment for our season going, okay, it's not all going to go to shit now just because of these injuries. Yeah, we actually, yeah. And Matt, there's a bit of the, is that thing. And if we could go out of the European situation, it might save our season because I... I <gasps> What's it called? Go on, Nacho, Nacho with the win, Go. Rooney, overhead kick. And he, and he Whoa, hit the what? Go on, Nacho. Wow. I've what rated this happened? kid, but I've never seen out like that from him. <laughs> Jesus that Christ. Beautiful. Mate, what? that, is it, is that it, came out of nowhere. But isn't it contentious for him to do Ronaldo's um, celebration when he's Argentinian? I don't know why. No, nah, <laughs> when you hear a goal like that, you can do Mate, that do what you want, right. son. That celebration was what a kid. He's still processing. Look. Kobe Maynard, though. Wow. Mate, that wow. was so good. That was stunning. And, and that will take the sting out of the game. We know um, we've heard so much about the uh, atmosphere today. Well, it's it's two minutes into the and, fucking yeah. match and he's done that. There you go. Yeah. Let's I, watch this I, back. I think that's a massive blow for Everton because I can't see them coming back in any real way. It's so. early as well. I don't know. Like was, I'd rather concede now, though. Was this better than Rooney's? Yeah. Aye, it was. Oh, what, it, was, oh it, was it was on the edge of Mate, the area. It was way better than Rooney's. It was what a goal! Do you know why? Because he actually ran away. Like he yeah. ran away from goal that was, that's, that's to find goal the goal of the season. Oh, that is easy. world. That is Easily. goal of the season. Do you know that. what? A lot of United Jeez. fans have been saying that this kid's got something, and it's a lot of I, I, don't, I wasn't Jesus sure. Christ. I didn't, wasn't sure in the big no, game. He needs coaching so bad. So good. He needs coaching so bad. That one's not off the shin either. Yeah, that's that looked like clean. What goal? Aces. Great cheekbones. <laughs> <laughs> He's a boxer, mate. He's yeah. a man after your own heart. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> mate, that's just stunned uh, me. Second, second goal of the season from uh, Garnacho. And uh, to be fair, he has glimpses where he looks the mm. part, but 
like most Man United players, the, he's not clicked yet. Yeah. That was unreal. Which is uh, interesting, they put Rashford on the other side so that they can accommodate him, which is a, a quite a big Do you know what that's yeah. a sign of? of yeah. Like the frustration of Rashford as <laughs> yeah, well. And yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Fuck this. You like, know what as well? With uh, obviously Chelsea losing yesterday, Spurs losing today, there's a real opportunity for Man United here because we were saying before about the fact that they weren't playing well, but they had put themselves in a position that if all of a sudden they do start playing well, unlike potentially Chelsea now, they're actually in a situation where it's like, well, you've managed to keep chipping away and staying in there where yeah. you're actually relevant with a shout for top four, top five places that could get you uh, Champions League. So if they win this today, they're right, they're right in there and, and, you know, in within a shout of getting back in that mix. I mean, if they win again today, they'll definitely be continuing as the form team in the Premier League. And we, already we've, are. We've, been, we've been getting on to them. Yeah. We've well, not me. I just... <laughs> we've, we've been on to big time. On to, on to, um, we've been slagging off Ten Hag Ten left, Hag, right and centre. Ten Hag's been getting yeah, it. Yeah. He's yeah. been getting yeah. it. Yeah. I, I mean, I, rightly I so, the, the um, performances have been really poor. Well, the goal difference speaks for itself. They've conceded more than they've scored. Wow. Like, the fact that they're in the top eight, mm. having conceded more than they've scored, shows mm. how fluky they've been this season. And that goal kind of sums up Man United's season in many regards. Because I'm kind of like, yeah, I mean, this could be a hard game for them. And then that happens. Like, and, and really, it's been moments of brilliance rather than good performances. Um, but look, I still think Everton... They're a funny club. Like whenever they hit that relegation uh, bottom three, they seem to come back alive like the Undertaker. Has, has the ten points been taken yet? Yeah, yeah. 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 So they're, they're bottom they're, now. They're bottom at the moment. They should be. They're not bottom. They're, 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 they are now. They're joint bottom yesterday. on after four yesterday. points. Yeah. Oh, what based on this game or what? Because yesterday uh, I just saw the table table twice and uh, Burnley. Are like you've got to come out swinging. Yeah, they right had fourteen now. points. They're now gone down to uh, four. To four. I'll be honest. If you're at home against Man United, this is no disrespect to Man United because obviously they're still a big club, decent team. But I think if you've just had point deductions and you really want to go and get some points back, Man United are not a, a sure bet taken. right now. Yeah, they're they're, they're just not taken. a sure bet. Even though they're getting over the line with these results, they're not a sure bet. Everton should come out and, and this is bad for they're them starting like this. Yeah, yeah, but, but, yeah, they, yeah but they're playing 4-4-1 right now. If, like, they've got no chance. If you had to face like a top eight team right yeah. now, Man United would be one of the choices. Ironically, I think they're the most yeah. informed. They are. They are. They are, yeah. also, they are though, the most informed team in the Premier League. Also, they've got this weird little stat where if they score first or something, they, they don't lose or something like that. I don't know what it is to be specific, but it's oh, hard to beat them when they score first. If they score more than the opponent, they never lose. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a stat. He's now uh, tell you what, this guy knows football. <laughs> ladies does. and gentlemen. <laughs> Listen that's to why we have him on. That's why we have him on. Yeah, and I wouldn't care with them uh, starting uh, as Anthony Martial. I was like, fuck me, what's this going to look like? But what? Is Anthony injured? <laughs> as in, as in the, the winger. <laughs> yeah, because he's not in the squad at all. No. Yeah, he oh, must he's not in the squad. He must be injured. He's, he's not in the a, squad. He must, he must he's not be. on the bench and he not, he got not his in the line. caught yeah. in something. Yeah. Yeah. Caught it. Why? What happened there? So, caught it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> moving on. Mm -hmm. Fuck yeah. <laughs> that goal has literally just stunned me. Like, mm. I, yeah. I never expected well, that. Well, you're desperate for Man United to win today, aren't you? So. Fucking right, somehow. Yeah. Um, no, obviously Newcastle right now, we're in uh, sixth place and interestingly Spurs are now out of top four. Yep. Um, so that didn't take long. Um, we're uh, three points behind Spurs. If Man United win, they go above us into sixth. So this this would be a great win for them. Who, who of out of those teams that are up there in the top half of the table do you think it's most important that they do business in this transfer window coming up in January? Because I'd look at it now and I'd think even without the injuries, I would have said Spurs. Like, I think there's a bit of business to be done there for Spurs. Um, just when it comes to depth, like even before, this is why we were saying it was so cautionary if they got injuries because the depth wasn't there. So surely Daniel Levy needs to look at that, look at the fact that despite losing today, they've got a really good manager, really good style of play there and he needs to back him in January. But if it, the thing is, even us, like what are we playing for? I don't know what we're playing for, this team. Champions League. Champions League. Yeah, but are we though? Like at the start of this season, was we really, was we in contention for yeah, that? Yeah, but you're no. in contention now. You've got to go for it now. Yeah, but then, to. but then you've seen what's happened. It's just mm. all unraveled. Like, I don't know what Tottenham are playing for. Like, even when I look at our contemporaries, and this is including Newcastle now with the money, we don't have as much money as the other teams that we're fighting, competing against. We never have. We don't pay the wages they pay, pay and we don't spend the money they spend on transfer. Your wage bill must be We're always punching above. above. Your, your wage bill must be higher than Newcastle's. It yeah, must be. I would assume it, so. It must right be. now, yeah. maybe. Yeah, I, actually, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. It must be. I don't know. I actually don't know. Daniel, you'd be surprised. Daniel Levy is... <laughs> yeah, you make a good point. He is tight yeah, but with purse strings. But like, we've only just tight. got money, right? Yeah. So, And we're still being very careful, mm. especially now that 
teams are legit getting deducted points out here. Like, like, did anyone feel like ten points was harsh for Everton? Okay, yeah. can we can we talk about this properly? This is it was it was a disgrace the amount the amount of punishment that they got. Mm. That. I mean, they were twenty million pounds over the over the limit of the FFP regulations, <laughs> That's and they got though. and and they got ten. Points. And this is the thing, right? So the Premier League um, they are under threat at the moment from an independent regulator. The government are pushing this through because it's seen to be that the Premier League can't regulate themselves. They're allowing stuff like this to happen. Obviously, we've got the Man City case that hasn't been um, found out. We're just watching uh, Calvert-Lewin go through. Calvert-Lewin oh, oh. him, lovely. Oh, Ooh, not bad, shot. not bad at Shaky. all. Um, and obviously, the Premier League need to be seen that they can regulate themselves. So it, it seems like they're putting out a very, very harsh punishment to Everton as a deterrent. And in fact, in the uh, in the, the the sort of court case that they, they went through, they said, this is a deterrent. We're giving this punishment so that other clubs don't follow this. And fair enough, right? The Premier League has put forward a lot of uh, warnings to Everton. They said to them several times, do not go over this limit. You're going over this limit. Don't do it. And they still did. But I have to say, to punish the fans of that football club yeah. for the actions of the owners and the board that have mismanaged their club over and over and over again, I think is really... Coming from you, I'm surprised, Josh, because you're very yeah. much by the book. Normally, I remember the Tonali case. You were very much, rules are rules. Rules are shouldn't rules. shouldn't question them. Brian. Which, <laughs> <laughs> just, just had this been sitting in here for a little while, been waiting to pull this out. Well, I'm glad you said that, Brian, because did you know that the, <laughs> there isn't actually a lot of rules about the punishments? There isn't, there isn't like a formal. Oh, so there's convenient. Not, okay, <laughs> yeah. So there's not a one size fits all system, unfortunately. In, in which case, so they're just going to make it up as they go along. Then that's what they've done, which yeah. is part of the problem. So, like with Manchester City, who obviously are owned by the officially, you go high enough. There's ties to Barclays who sponsor the Premier League, mm. um, they might be a bit more lenient on that one then. Yeah. <laughs> just, just, just theorizing. Just putting it. I'm just I don't think out. anyone should be punished. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Really. No, <laughs> but no, do you know why I feel bad for Everton? And listen, I'm, I'm by no means an expert in this field, Please. but one of the things and one of the reasons why Everton were punished was because of the, uh, the, the spending with their stadium, right? And of course, that was their decision to go and build a new stadium. But one of the key things I think you should always look at is whether a team have gained a sporting advantage. And I get that some of the signings here and there, yeah, you could argue that the signings didn't give them a real sporting advantage but, 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 but when yeah. it's like the stadium you didn't gain any sporting advantage there not until you move into that stadium yeah, but no it, player it is playing on that players. pitch no player is playing on that pitch and thinking it's going to be brilliant when we get into that new stadium in two years when my contract's up no no one no, yeah, so it's, it's I, because the players that they bought were so bad that there was no sporting advantage but it allowed them to pay for more players that they shouldn't necessarily have afforded mm. it's not my fault they spent 40 million on Wobi and then he ended up not particularly doing very well long term so it's, just, it's a, a different conversation isn't it yeah you've got you got to look at it from the the teams that went down as well. Mm. They're, from their perspective, they're the ones that are suing. It, yeah, and rightly so. Three hundred millions feel, worth yeah, as well. Yeah, but they feel they feel that they had an unfair advantage and they went down because Everton were able to spend more than they were. I mean, if we're being honest, rules. it was the extra bit of quality that Everton had in those periods, and mm. the Goodison fans. To be fair to them, and Lampard. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so. Does this not make you guys a bit more worried because Chelsea apparently have kind of admitted themselves? Yeah. We've found a few little uh, discrepancies well, here. Previous ownership. Uh, <laughs> it's not our fault. Don't bl don't shoot the messenger. But those guys were rubbish. Mm. What do you think of that? Because you guys will get punished way worse because we have no doubt that Chelsea will have abused the system way worse than Everton ever could have. Yep. I think this is a very complicated issue. And Don't one know. that I feel... Yeah, one that I feel like a politician. This is why you my manager. <laughs> one, one, that why... Will, one that will go on for a very long time. I mean, look, the, both of the cases for Man City and Chelsea will go on for a long time. And so we're not going to get our closure for at least two years for both for both. But cases. you guys should be shitting yourselves. It's coming, I think, though. I think we are, we are shitting ourselves. And do you know what? When I first saw the story, been mentioned. when I first saw the story, I actually thought it's a load of bollocks. There is a statute of limitation, i.e., that you can only go so far back. It's six years. You can you can only go that far and prosecute someone. Um, so you think, okay, this has gone on a long time ago. There's only a certain amount of occurrences that go on in this time. But I have to say, when they put down that ten point deduction, and you look at what they did, it was one breach, twenty million pounds, mm. right? And you look at the Man City case, which was effectively like complete deception. And if they prove that case, Man City are, are in very, very big trouble because they, not only have they lied about it, they've intentionally kept the case going can for we, a very long all, time. Yeah, can but, we, and then can the we just be honest one. at the table though? We all know Man City and Chelsea have both done this. Of course. But this is, yeah, the, this is the difference. This is the difference between the soft power of Man City and Chelsea 
and and Everton. And it is that it is that simple. There will the Premier League need Chelsea and Man City more than they need Everton. Mm. And that is the sad state of affairs. Why do you and that's think that? why well, it's just because of the fan bases and because of the money well, that they bring. Rating. And this is the thing, like, this is why La Liga don't hate, they hate punishing Barcelona and Real Madrid. Because you know they need... I, when I look at Man City, um, I don't think that uh, they are in any way a mega club. Like, they've achieved mega things. They are. But I don't think that they are... Um, anyone is clamouring mm. to watch them in the way a prime Manchester United were in the early 2000s. I don't think they have that anywhere near that level of pull no. um, in ratings, in... in well, like, but what, but what it, it, everyone at this th table ever does a Manchester City video on the YouTube, it'll flop. Flops. There's no interest there in that club by comparison to... And I, and I think Chelsea are in a different space, to be fair to them. But I'm just saying, I don't know if that'll it's be enough. It's not about the fact. Did you see no, what I'm Ever talking about view view ratings, viewings and all Did you that. see what he said in the statement from Everton? That they'll be watching with a keen interest how the other... how the other Because they know what's coming. Yeah. They know exactly what's coming. And people are saying, oh, I'm sitting here being smug about it as a Chelsea fan. Of course, I'm happy that the inevitable, which I think is coming, which is a real show of big club bias from the Premier League, is going to come. We will get a we will get a points deduction, probably about 20 points. Even 30, if we're proven to have done what has happened, and obviously, look, Josh knows more about it than me in terms of how far these things can go back. Um, but even 30 points would probably be an injustice to Everton if they've been docked 10 points. It's, That's it's, the mad thing about the, it. The but it about will Man happen. City we will get big club buys. So with, with Manchester City, the documents that they use as a foundation to accelerate their investigation into them were stolen documents. Yeah. So it, there, there are problems in terms of how things are discovered before you can use them. And if they can't find out that these companies that aren't companies or whatever it was that funded them then there is no case to answer for which is where probably the confidence comes from i'm speaking very allegedly mm. right now and they've won a case um, by and, the way and so cool. yeah they've already won a case so, so so from them they're very confident it's not the same issue but what we're talking about is this sort of incremental creep that every club does to kind of push the margins of their budgets on a year-by-year -year mm. basis that needs to stop regardless so the Man City thing is a completely separate issue and even the Chelsea thing happens so historically you might not be able to hold them to account on that also there's a massive question of, of previous ownership as to how much of that is then maintained I, I, so, I must admit if if I do feel like there should be some allowances made to Chelsea if the if the new owners have come in and gone fuck me let's hold our hands up and go we've found all this out you guys, I think they should be given some sort of allowance of, all right, you've admitted this. You didn't do it yourselves. Yeah, mm -hmm. like a criminal court. And also These... remember the club before the sale was in, was it the hands of the government? Who who, who was the, the, yeah, the custodian? That, that, that... It, 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 was, it was in the hands of them for three months. You know what I mean? So, yeah, but it didn't and, happen and during was, that time, though. It didn't happen during that time. But what I'm saying is there was no... Uh, look into that sort of process and that false accounting and whatnot in that time. And there was, by all means, the the possibility to have been able to do that. And we're being told that the owners weren't allowed to look back through the books and stuff until they'd purchased the club. So pretty much, if you if you accumulate the time it's taken to basically do it, uh, pretty much the first but opportunity, but I'm sure they had a week or two to mull over what they were going to do when they realised it, but pretty much the first opportunity, we've grasped ourselves up. We've gone, look, you know, we can yeah, see that there. So this, this is the and thing what, of like asking the question of what do you constitute as the club? So we, you mentioned earlier about punishing the fans is wrong, but the fans aren't the club. And so the club is whatever the name and the holding and whoever owns it is irrelevant. Mm. If the club has made an advantage, i.e. they now have increased revenue because they won some Champions Leagues, because they bought some players with money they shouldn't have had, the club must be punished. And so I, I think it's, it should work in their favour that they've um, presented this, but it's only a matter of time before this stuff should have been C shared anyway. Can I put a counter case to you, though, in that the board and the, the people that are managing the club mismanaged Everton, for example, right? And, and uh, ditto for Man City and at the time, ditto for Chelsea. We, they all got advantages. But Everton are still there. The, the ownership, the board are still there. They're still running the club and potentially operating them into the ground. It's, if this, if this uh, lawsuit happens and they do get the 300 million case through... Everton are going to be in real trouble. They've got a stadium they, they, they that's half exist. built. There'll be they points exist. deductions. They'll be in real, real trouble, right? Yeah. So how can you punish? And, and the government are talking about this quite extensively, about clubs have like a historic geographical significance to a certain area. And they're really playing that up. 
right? How can you punish fans that are going there week in, week out, supporting their club when it should be the people that are running the business that so, are punished? So, so, why, so what, why do you not punish the people running the business? Like, why do we not say they can't be directors again or actually give them personal fines? Because this, this is a great conversation about whether the owners of a football club should just be custodians of a football club rather than the owner. And the ownership model should 100% change because you're right, they are so key to the areas as well as the economy of those areas. It's super important. But in this particular moment, they're private businesses. Mm. And so there is nothing you can actually do to protect them. And this is why Britain as a country has done made such a massive effort to protect private businesses and keep owners of those businesses from p prosecution. It has now worked against the fans. Yeah. So the fans may then have to be a consequence of all of these um, lack of governance for football. But you can't and also go and flip on the other side and say, what about the fans? Because it's not, no, it hasn't been a fan thing for over 30 years. Like it's not since the 90s has it been, you know, your local scaffolding business. The guy that runs that now owns, do you know what I mean? He builds some houses and he owns a football club and he's the local guy. That's, them days are way over. This is why the people, like all of the fan groups in the Bundesliga, they laugh at us. You know, they um, have the fan ownership of the clubs. They actually own their clubs. I, and I agree. I think that's the best model by mile. Yeah. You know, when VAR was first introduced, right? We thought that it would just be used when necessary and it wouldn't interrupt the game too much. And all of a sudden, it's completely absorbed the game and taken over. When the fines come through, the points deductions for City as well as Chelsea, and we've had Everton already, and the suing of other clubs because they, uh, you know, the club that was fined or points deducted benefited from these clubs going down and things like that. That is going to open up a massive, massive can of worms mm. in this country in terms of that will be happening left, right and centre. It will be massive. Every single club is going to be suing. Cup finals won. Champions League spots missed out on. This team won, you know, and a, and a, and a transferred person. player that was bought in sent them down with the goal like Tevez well, did um, back imagine, in the day. Imagine the, the people who finished runners-up to Man City. Of course. I mean, they're going to be seriously pissed. Mm. Liverpool lost by one point. Yeah. You know when it was us uh, versus City in the final? Who do we give the Champions League to there? You can't give it to City <laughs> who lost. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I think that's why they will start to protect those outcomes because those sporting outcomes almost have to be different. You yeah. can only impact what happens in the future. Mm -hmm. Going back, I think, is a can of worms. Mm. So I was it unfair for Everton? Just, it, 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 I get we're not privy to everything, but do we feel it's a little bit unfair, a 10-point deduction? Because I, I personally do. I think, I think it's unfair, and I think it's so unfair that it will be um, given a less than less so so appeal. How many points I think you say? I, I, uh, is it is it I unfair? Think points, no, it, if you think ten's unfair, how much points would you say is fair? But is is it unfair when you've Six, beaten relegation? You've beaten relegation based on these the cheating. Mm. You've been cheating and you've beaten relegation. It's like what they're saying is, well, we're putting you right back in that situation mm. because that's what you deserve. I don't think it's, ten points is unfair. Six points, for example, that's just two losses. That's it. Mm. Like that can be turned around. But I think, I think they need to make million, an example. Ten, it's 20 Ten million can be quid. turned around this season. I still think they get out of it. You True, know? No, but that's why I don't think it's that hard. I'm not no, thinking no. about it like as in not, not in the context, Everton, no, no. but it's it's the fact of um, these. Imagine you're a fan of these clubs who've been relegated because of these advantages. Yeah. Like, are they going to be thinking, oh, 10 points is a bit harsh? If I was Leeds, I would 100% be. Do you know what's funny? Yeah, but the don't, day, you can't blame other people for being shit as well, though. Let's, be, <laughs> let's <laughs> be real. Like, you've been shit. There's no taking away from that. The free That's what they're going to say to him. Court. But but money, no, but money know, helps but your teams buy oh, better. Oh come on, you were shit. Oh, of course, but they were shit. <laughs> that, they were shit. That's why they got. Oh, they were shit. A lot of those teams that got relegated deserve to get relegated. Let's be real. Do you know what's interesting? And I think we need to go into this with our eyes wide open here. And said it the other day, right? He said, I'm going to do everything I can not to bend the rules, but I'm going to push the rules as far as I physically can. Course, pit, yeah. right? And if, you, if we're naive enough to think that people in the boardrooms aren't going to do that in the Premier same. League, where everything, every single million pound makes a difference, every single small advantage makes a difference. I, I'm telling you now, Arsenal are, are doing it. Hey, every hey, single hey, club hey, are doing it. They're pushing, alone. like, <laughs> every you single football club are bad to, for it. To your point, though, when everyone was like, oh, Newcastle are going to try and get Neves on loan from Saudi. Mm. Let's stop this. There, and they put it a into vote. a vote. <laughs> and fucking seven other clubs are like, actually, we're planning on doing a bit yeah. of yeah. dealings as <laughs> yeah. well. Like, it, it just showed the hypocrisy of the fact that Newcastle are seen as, like, the big bad wolf when they're all at it. No, but you, you get a better opportunity than anybody else. Yeah, we're pretty Newcastle haven't done nothing wrong. We're looking at the... Should we get 
Ronaldo, Neymar, yeah. Conte. Who should we get on loan yeah. for six months? It's pretty good. Like, so Are I, you going to take anyone from the Saudi league? I, I you mean, should I, do. I, I think Neves is looking a possibility. I got, I got told that that wasn't happening now. Yeah, he's trying to stay. Uh, yeah. it, it seems like um, because he's actually having a good season over there, I think mm. he might end up staying. But I, well. I would not be surprised if we're looking into that league. Does their season end at some point where they can be loaned over here? Or is it? Is it in who, who knows? No. Isn't it tax free over there? Ronaldo, well. Ronaldo will definitely yeah. get a move away yeah, to a big European club. At this rate, we could have Francis Ngannou playing for us. You know what I mean? <laughs> Saudi money goes What position far. would Francis Ngannou play? Mate, I don't think goal. <laughs> yeah, Imagine put a ball past him. Yeah, You've got I'd no chance. In front. Uh, apparently, Man United's uh, Champions League spot might be in danger due to the fact that they are a co-owner of uh, Nice, right? So if, ne if whoever finishes higher in the league... What's this? You're only allowed to own one Basically, club in the Champions Jim, League. Jim, uh, Jim, Radcliffe oh. would, Jim Radcliffe would probably sell Nice. Yeah. yeah. It, like, it would make sense. Or, or transfer his shares yeah. to an ambiguous... Yeah, yeah, to an offshore <laughs> account. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, but as it stands, it goes to the club who finish higher in their respective league. So if both end up in Champions League spots yeah. and Nice finish higher, which they mm. currently are... Mm it would go to Nice automatically. Uh, and Jim, Man United would Jim, be... Jim, if you need me to be a figurehead, I'm free. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, allegedly, Man United would then be out of Europe. Uh, they would be in... Wouldn't even get... I don't know if they'd get Europa League. I don't know. Uh, I think it would be difficult because if they did go out of the Champions League down into the Europa League, then you've got the same problem. No, so, yeah. because no, but you've then got um, the, the other clubs who've got Europa spots. You can't just take uh, yeah, them true. out of it yeah. uh, because you happen to own more clubs. So, um, yeah, that's going to be... Well, now a, you can loan between clubs. You know what to do then, don't you? Loan all the starting 11 to Nice <laughs> and then just support them for the it's season. Fucking mental, isn't it? Um, so, yeah, Everton, Everton are trying to put some pressure on uh, Man United, but they, like they say, the, the, the quality just hasn't been there so far. They've worked the ball well in the final third, and then that final ball is often shit. You know, yeah. we were talking about Man United's recent uplift in form and obviously at the top of the form charts and whatnot. What were we thinking about Anana? Because he hasn't made like a high profile mistake in a good couple of games now and he's starting to look a little bit more solid between the sticks isn't he's he he's doing what he should be should have been doing from the beginning now really yeah, he's not he? doing anything amazing yeah. it's interesting I mean Brian would you rather have him over Pope no uh, no no not right now um, but as, as you say I'm, I, I'm monitoring him <laughs> uh, I've got my eye on him mm. and like you say he hasn't been I'm just looking at their results right and for me what I'm looking back at is Man United have had some really easy fixtures right they've beaten Luton they've beaten um, sorry they lost to Copenhagen they beat Fulham Fulham were one of the worst teams in that game I've seen all season um, and then they lost back to back Newcastle and uh, Man City so when we're saying like you know they've done well I mean they, they conceded three, uh, three goals to Man City three goals to Newcastle it's not like they've been great in the Premier League they've just been playing shit teams like Brentford no, there's no disrespect, but Fulham <laughs> um, and Luton. Like, to me, they're games you should win. Like, it's mm. been good fixtures lately. So I'm still on the fence because I'm like, yeah, you've won five in a row and now you're beating Everton today as you should. Mm. Um, why, why is Ten Hag in the stand, by the way? Yeah, that's what I, thought. I think I it's the remember. three yellow card thing. It's he's the same got, as Pochettino. He's had three yellow cards as well. well po yeah, Pochettino had three. I, 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 I like this cap. reason. I like he's his, his manager. I thought this was a rare thing and now we've got two managers at the same time getting suspended. But isn't that a new rule that was brought in this season, right? This is what I they think so, in. yeah. No, but it's even rare for a manager to pick up a yellow card. That don't yeah. happen often. I, I, just don't think we get, I just don't think we get to see it when it happens. Yeah. It kind of happens like in among, amongst a whole bunch of stuff. Remember, there's a new rule. Because I didn't actually know about the other two that Poch had got. We only see no. the altercation between him and Anthony Taylor, of course, because it was it was newsworthy. Anthony Taylor versus Chelsea's a, a storyline that goes back, so we saw that. But I think on the sly, sometimes you'll just see it and, you know, it's not even televised, and that's why we see him in the stands. It, I mean, so far, this actually has been a pretty poor game of football. Like, Garnacho's made up for it, mm. credit to him, yeah. but it's been scrappy. It's it's not like there's any real good opportunities being created by either side. It's been poor. Um, so yeah, I hope I'm, I'm happy for Kobe Maino, though. I've met him a yeah. times. He's a, he's a good young player as Is well. Is he United Academy yeah. graduate? Yeah. Wanted Have you heard about the, the Spurs points deduction? I heard about for Jermaine Defoe. So, uh, I heard back about in 2008. It's so weird. He's been how, very quiet. How are we going He's back? He's been very quiet. So, so 2008. To the title, the, the headline is uh, FA confirm an investigation into a serious agent rule breach during Jermaine Defoe's Portsmouth um, transfer uh, where he, they used an unofficial agent to do that, which is mind blowing because that then could also be a points deduction. You can't get Yeah, but this, this is what back. I'm saying. Though. This is what you I'm about it, hey, opening a you massive, a point, massive yeah, yeah. can of worms. Like, you can pull up this on 
every single no, no, club. No. It's going to be a Me Too movement with the yeah, Premier League. Like every literally. single club like, has done it. something in their time. Like it's just. I would just like to say that the one time we did do it, George Graham got um, captured and uh, <laughs> moved on. And so I feel like us as a club, feel free to investigate us because we are. Confident. Yeah, but how would you know? Because I wouldn't. Have, are, I didn't know about this. We are thing. This has just come out of nowhere. We are confident in our innocence in this matter. Please <laughs> investigate Chelsea further. I'm, I'm just happy that Amanda Stavely coming to Newcastle has got like wind of this <laughs> early because like we might have been yeah we tempted. might have been like yeah. should we just chance it because City have been getting away with this for 20 yeah. years but now we're just like okay we can't fuck around here we got to be really squeaky clean cool. especially because of the Saudi but, but the, gi the gist of this Jermaine Defoe thing the way I understand it is so so common Intermediary, like yeah. it's so common like it, this would have happened one in every five transfers or saying I'm not saying that exact situation but you know what I mean all this stuff in the late 90s early 2000s early 2010s so common also so isn't common. this the, wasn't this the second time we signed him it wasn't even the first no, it was when was he it? went to Portsmouth Oh, when he went to Portsmouth. To Portsmouth. Yeah. Oh, okay. when you had Pavlachenko and Bent up front. Oh, was that God, time? Don't me. So what's it even matter? Yeah. It's it's laughable. They're not going to get a points deduction. We're not going to get a points no, deduction. No, we're going to call point. it quits. No, but there was an investigation. <laughs> no, I would be Arsenal happy for Spurs not to get a points deduction journalists. if we don't. I'd yeah, just... yeah, me too. I'd be happy for Everton not to get a points yeah. deduction. Let's if all we don't. We've all done wrong here. <laughs> just. I feel like this collectivizing uh, that you're doing is not really great for my club. So I don't say can you, when you say all, say your collective clubs around the table. Aside sorry, from our sorry. Club. All the London clubs <laughs> around this table have done wrong. Aside from us. Sorry, Brian. All the London clubs. <laughs> should, should, should we talk about the uh, the City Liverpool game yesterday? Um, mm -hmm. Who watched it? What did you think of it? Boring. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty boring. I thought uh, weird to have the 12 30 kickoff straight away after the international break as the biggest game of the weekend. Can we, can like, we just say, stick West Ham Burnley on it, that game. It, it made me laugh, right? Because I was watching Match of the Day and I was like, oh, you know, City are next. Uh, oh, oh, no, Sheffield United. Oh, uh, you know, the next game. No, uh, Man City was the last game on Match of the Day. That no, tells you everything you need no, to know. It, it was. It was right, the last rightly, game. Rightly so. Yeah. It, was, it was terrible. It was, uh, it, it, was, it was shockingly bad. And like, for a game of that significance, you're thinking this is an advert for the Premier League mm. broadcast around the world, and yet the lack of aggression from both teams oh. was staggering. Um, the lack of an atmosphere. Like Pep Guardiola was trying to G the crowd up. It was embarrassing. Yeah. Like mm. you could hear a fucking pin drop. And Do you know what? I, I know City get a bad rep, and occasionally it's a bit harsh because sometimes they have got a decent atmosphere there. Yeah. This was terrible. It was a 12, yeah. 12 o'clock kickoffs are tough, man. <laughs> it's a lot. A it's it's a, it's break. No, it's it is. Tough. You've got to start drinking at 10. Yeah, You've got to be like... it's tough. It's tough to do, man. Like, I, I feel like every time I've gone to a 12.30, I'm more subdued, mm. even myself in my seat. No, I think that's, that's partly true, but still, it was like, it's fucking Liverpool. Like, you're battling these for the title. Mm. No, but I, think, I think it's a bigger question about how the league and games are currently being managed and run. I think that there is just way too much football. And I think international break needs to be managed that that for me is a part well, the of the extra chaos. time is a force as it, well it, isn't it, it ruins, you know it ruins all the injuries the... have gone up by like 15 percent, 20 percent like just... what when do injuries happen when fatigue mm. sets in yeah. why do you think they're fatigued so much because you're making them play 100 minutes of football almost every game <gasps> that game oh, oh, oh surely oh, oh, oh the line with it. off it's the Manu. line was it's that Manu? Manu. Yeah, yeah 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 good yeah. save by good defending great save by that's so unlucky give him some credit always have I will give him some credit but can I just say the point we made a while ago and I'm really picking at straws here but the point we made a while ago about when Anana saves a shot he's always spilling oh. it in front of him isn't what he yeah. 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 and he's done yeah. that again yeah. there if I'm playing Man United we rattle it from range and have someone follow the keeper <laughs> every time Kepa, Kepa for every Chelsea time. used to do it a lot like, Mate, he's gifting them goal line clearance from Kobe Brian on the coaching stuff Look at this. Yeah, tell me about that. <laughs> oh, oh, I lovely. love a good toe I punk. love a toe punt. I love, I love toe a toe punt. punt. It's the only way I can score goals. Yeah, so... Can I, can I, can I, just yeah, going back yeah. to the Man City-Liverpool game, yeah? I'm, I'm, I was surprised at the way Liverpool was playing, though, in that game. They were shy. Why? Yeah. Why, why, why? They just felt like... You know, Klopp always, like, moans and goes on about attacking football and teams that don't attack. He used to get on Spurs so much when we had Conte and Mourinho about being negative. The game against Man City, I get it. It's Man City at the Etihad. They're a top Mate, team. They're always going to control. Man. He's they're a always, hypocrite. They're always going to control the ball. But yet, that that performance from Liverpool yesterday looked so defensive to me. It didn't look attacking in the slightest. Everton looking oh, lively. Oh, oh, you've got to oh. score that to Corre. You've got to score it. Oh, he flashed it past the right-hand side of the post. Poor poor that was Everton have got finishing. a spring in their step here, by the they way. Everton, uh, Everton are playing better football than Man United. But yeah. is anyone surprised? 
Like really? Mm. No, I, well, no, I actually backed Everton for the win today. Yeah. I thought, I thought that, I, yeah, I thought Everton were going to win today. I, I just, do you know what? More oh. on vibes. Like I thought there was a bit of an atmosphere <laughs> because of obviously the points deduction Being and whatnot. Home. Backs up. I just thought, yeah, yeah. you know, that will be. They said the Goodison Park is going to be a bear pit. Oh, that's, nice. the, that's the term they've used today. Mm. So I'm, I'm, I'm what is a shame bear pit? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. Just <laughs> obscure I've, I've never for people I've, raised I've, in West London. Game of Thrones. She's a bear pit. Good episode. Good salt. <laughs> Did we think the goal, uh, the disallowed goal was unfair? Oh, because come on, let's talk about that. That was a joke. That was a joke. Can it was I not a foul. Can that I, was not, foul. That was not a foul. Can, can, I, can I say? That was not a you foul. Got a little... Can I say? Did you see that? I thought it was fair. No. What? I thought it was fair. Why? Why? Right. Why? right, okay. Joke. So, Joey. So, to use a bit of a, a, a sort of boxing situation here, when you parry a jab off someone, you can give it the most faint touch and the jab goes flying completely over there when it was intended for here. You, if you've got your arms above your head and you're going to catch a ball and you've got the ball in your hand more or less, the tiniest little knock can send it out. And for that reason, I thought as small as it was, I thought, you know what? I can see a world where that is fair. I That's no, nice. it was soft for me. It, it, he's got to catch it. We t- didn't catch it at all. Should we talk about Arsenal Newcastle? Should we talk uh, about that? That, that, that was worse. <laughs> we're, we're not allowed <laughs> to talk about that. <laughs> Plus, I'm that sorry, wasn't involved in the goalkeeper. <laughs> That wasn't oh, impeding right. the goalkeeper, though, was it? No, but, that you, was a push no, but there, was a, there was a defender in front to Can clear the ball away, and, and he literally hands, had his hand extended out and it wasn't and pushed given. him We're forward. We're not doing this. And we didn't, Stop. We didn't Stop. acknowledge Stop. it. Mov, Mov, I don't care Mov. about your independent adjudicator. Stop. <laughs> Stop. But then, yeah, but then with the Man City one, I thought No, but you know what? In real time, this, I thought this, it was so soft. This, this is what makes fan bases unlikable, yeah, is that when you win officially and you still don't call out the fouls, because, like, you know, for us, if we if something happens against us and it and it really wasn't a goal and we score I'll just say do you know what I don't think it was a goal but I'm glad we won did you, you think Havertz should have been like... sent off in that match then for, the, for Newcastle game? for sure definitely no, no, that no. was absurd but, but, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're not doing games him. from three weeks ago so back to Liverpool <laughs> I wasn't yeah. here so I, 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 I'm, I'm just catching up mm. <laughs> I, 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 I completely yeah. agree with uh, Craig in that Liverpool were nowhere near as aggressive oh. as what I, f- I thought they would be like watching City this season they don't look as good as they were last season to me mm. and I thought you've just can see did, it, did Liverpool not see them concede four goals to Chelsea the last game like what are you guys waiting for yeah. and, uh, it was Putting just a four complete... past City isn't forever no, but it was. It, was it just looked timid. It looked timid. Look at him. He's got his attitude back already. He's forgotten <laughs> yesterday. Um, but Trent said that after the game, though. He said in the first half, we were just a bit, we gave them too much respect. Yeah. Those were the words he used. And it looked like that. It's like a couple of seasons ago when they were jostling for the title, there was no respect. It was, we know we're just as good as you. And they used to battle it out. It was a tactical yeah. affair. Both teams but would attack. I don't think this is the same Liverpool. I think they're doing very they're right well. They're right up actually. there, though. No, Liverpool are doing very well. And they're going under the radar, which I think is going to work in their favour. Because there's no pressure on them. There's no one talking about them for the title in the same way. So I think they're going to sneak through the, the, the gears a little bit. But it was just a very boring game. No, but you when know, I'm seeing Mo Salah... Mo Salah doing loads of defensive work, like in his own yeah, half, yeah, yeah. tracking runners. Like, for, like it look at one point I was looking at the Liverpool team, and it felt like they're two blocks of four at one point. Yeah. And I don't, I rarely see that. You just hate to see it when a manager goes to a big title rival and just bottles it, don't? It's a shame. <laughs> just wish he, no, but I just no, wish he'd a bit do longer. that though. It was weird. It was just a weird game, and then it just made the game dry. I'm, I, I was surprised to see Jones and uh, Jota start uh, personally. That was interesting. Uh, jo- Jones, I, I, I don't know if he's cut out for that level, but uh, yeah, I mean, it didn't, it didn't backfire as much as I thought it would have done. Uh, but overall, just poor. They just yeah. Liverpool, teams. Liverpool, like they seem, they only switched on at like seventy minutes. Like the game started for them at seventy minutes. Like they just came out of the blocks. They actually were attacking. I think that's that's it within the strategy of keep it tight, nick a goal. That, that, I, I, that was I, the goal. I feel like Man City have completely changed. They're not here to dominate and batter teams like they did before. It's a much more sturdy approach to a game. And I think the same same thing for Arsenal. They're not banging teams. They're not attacking and going super gung ho. No, I think it's, it's conscious. With you. I think with Arteta, this is a conscious thing of yeah. controlling games more so that you don't get the kamikaze situation yeah, at the end yeah, of last Southampton season. With Pep, I don't think that this is part of his strategy. I think it's the firepower that he had in Mares and Gundogan isn't there. Yeah. And Foden has not stepped up in the way we thought no. he would. Uh, Doku, for all he's getting all the plaudits, in big games, he hasn't stepped up yet. He's yeah. looking a bit Alan St. Maximin in, you know, like... Uh, I, thought he, he, I, thought he looked, I thought he looked right. Look, he, he got four assists in a game whenever that was, a couple yeah. of weeks ago. He's definitely a danger, but he's not got it to be... I expect him to terrorise Liverpool. Yeah. He, he didn't. For, for me, he should have taken... For him, Trent is a perfect player as a person to yeah. play against, and he didn't. But I, I, I just think that they always start slow and they will gear up over a period of time and get better. But I think Pep... 
and Arteta have both shifted their teams to be more stable than they are to be explosive. I think, I think um, to be honest with you, Pep's reliance on individual brilliance uh, in previous seasons, like every manager does when you've got a load of great players. Yeah. But now I think the, le the playing field is a little more level. And I think we're more seeing prepared. him, he, when you haven't got all the best, uh, you know, the fastest cars, mm. sometimes you, you know, you're know you not going to win all the races. But Bernardo mm. was amazing yesterday. Doku was very much uh, effective and, and Holland's always a threat. I, th I think once they get the Bruyne back later on in uh, next year or whatever, it'll yeah. be, they, they, they will find their flow just in time. I wouldn't put a treble will be on them again. Do you think De Bruyne will be the same level that he, that he was yes. though, after I, this I injury? Don't, I don't think he even uh, needs to be. But That's he's like, killer. he's 33, isn't he? Yeah. He's, so I, I do think he's an injury making, is significant. Making as that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Producer credit. What was that guy's actual first name? Cohen. I want to know. Cohen. 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 I, I, love it. It, yeah. I love the, it. The Trent uh, situation, you got, you know, people waxing the rickle about him scoring that goal, but, you know, was overhyped. What was he? Was he great in that game? Like Gary Neville's on a payroll. He got he got he got man of the match somehow. Yeah, yeah I, Gary Neville's on a payroll. I I seen them waxing <laughs> lyrical about him, and they were going, "What other fullback can pass the ball like that? Months. What other fullback can do that?" And I'm like, Kieran Trippier every week, mm. like like and and also Kieran Trippier actually can defend. Like mm. the fact uh, that the Doku was attacking him every single time, mm. and he was getting the form of success. He just wasn't scoring goals, but. I, but that the, wasn't because of Trent, though. That was because Doku's end product wasn't quite good. Yeah, it's yeah. more about him. But I, I just I find it bizarre that he got man of the match. I find it even more bizarre that he was spoken about like he's the next generation. Because well, he saved humanity. them a point, though, isn't it? Yeah, but he I, saved I just a point. It was a great I, I, I think I think it is a great fit. I think he's brilliantly talented. I think he plays in the wrong position, and he and he needs a either they need to play three at the back with someone who can protect him, or they need a new right back and and to get the most out of him. So it's just it, I don't get what the fuss is about. Right oh. now, if if Kevin De Bruyne doesn't come back. Uh, to the best that you can do. And look, maybe he doesn't even need to. He's that fucking good. He can be 50% uh, of what he was and still be one of the best players in, in the game. But I'm looking at uh, Foden and Doku and, and Grealish and thinking, are you guys going to create and score the level of goals no. needed around Haaland to win a Premier League title? Or um, when I'm looking at Arsenal, I think... Me Oh, oh, you're taking the pick, oh, Cal Lewin. Lewin. But header over the bar, free header. <laughs> Jesus. He's had chances today. Um, when I'm looking at Arsenal, uh, you know, obviously they don't have the Holland, but I think that some of their supporting uh, cast are more effective than the Man City players right yeah. now. And uh, you could argue um, Liverpool have some as well. So right now it's Holland keeping their head above the rest of them. And uh, it got, if any, remember, he used to have injuries. So if anything happens to him, the wheels are fucking coming well, I, off. I, th I think it's the other way. I think accommodating Haaland is, is stopping them from dominating teams the way they used to. Because when they played false nine that season, it was probably, they were better that season than when they went. But who were they using for that false nine? They were also using Mares yeah, and Gundogan. They don't they're have they're them now, mate. Yeah. They don't so have I, those match winners. Well, I, I think Mateus Nunez was going to be an error signing. Jesus and I think Christ. they'll 100%- Surely well, Everton have to score one. soon. Oh my God. I hate this team. Oh Cal my God. Calvin Manchester Lewin. United are the so luckiest well. team ever team, fucking man. created. None of these What's shots are even on target. None of them. Mm. It's been poor. bad. They're not even testing the keeper. Can we, uh, is anyone else around the table surprised that Liverpool are as high as they are? No. I, I'm, no. I was shocked by I'm, the I'm not surprised. I said at the start of the season, I thought they'd be the closest to Manchester City when all said and done. And I think that... Again, like they are sort of going under, out. going under the radar. In a well, when all said and done, we don't know. I would still back Liverpool to finish higher than Arsenal this season. To be fair, even with so. Europa League oh, football, well. yeah. I just, do you know what it is like when I look at the two in comparison? I just think that very similar in terms of the performances they're putting in so far but I do think that Liverpool have the manager who's a little bit more tried and tested and been there a little bit more so I would back Liverpool ever so slightly maybe to finish a little bit higher than Arsenal but I think the league cities either way so it doesn't really matter who finishes second and third out of the two but it'll, 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 it'll be tight but I'm not surprised to see them up there I feel with the midfield that they had at the start of the season I was questioning mm. it going are they will they have the quality the defensive now to but then maybe right that's before there. a ball was kicked do you yeah, not think yeah. once we had seen like two games you went Oh no, actually they've slotted in quite well already. I mean, to be honest, it was the Newcastle game that made me feel like that they're they're really up for this because they should not have won that by any <sighs> mate, but that they even won mate, that is the, bizarre. The amount of points we've thrown away, that, that's the most annoying thing. But yeah, mm. to be fair, they they have that killer instinct. But um I I thought that they they would suffer with injuries and that this lack of midfielders eventually would catch up to them, and it really hasn't. And uh, obviously uh Sobazai 
is just out of this world, isn't he? I, I don't know. I, I, I don't. I don't. I don't, I don't love their midfield like that. I don't think they have the best midfield in the league. I think they are good and they've been good at moments, but. So a couple of times since I've watched them, I feel like they've been outrun. So I, I, I can see how over the season... Well, we outrun them. We just couldn't put them to the sword, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah, and, and I, I can see by the end of the season, you can see how they'll just drop some points just because it's like they've done enough. Endo being a backup, Curtis Jones being a backup ain't enough. Um, for anywhere near. I also uh, feel like they're he, very reliant on Mo Salah as well. Like obviously he didn't score yesterday, but the amount of goals he's put away this season. Yeah, he's been. And the way he shows machine. up for them, he's just when you see him on the sheet, he's dangerous. Yeah. He's scary for opposition. And I think similar to like what you said about Haaland, if Liverpool to lose Salah, I don't think they go anywhere. I think injuries could be the one of the with these stupid hundred minute games. Yeah, yeah. injuries could decide. Maybe the it's title. That, that's the problem. Maybe that's what's really pushing the players a little bit. I was trying to think what it is because they've been Brian's playing insane. that many games for years now. 68 games is the standard for pretty much the top four teams. And it's just like, it must be the 100-minute games. Well, why do you think shattered? Newcastle have the most injuries as well? We have the most um, action-packed style in the yeah. Premier League of, in terms of outrunning people. And it, when you're doing it 100 minutes every fucking game, it's long. And like that game, uh, the, the Liverpool City game, one each, no big incident, yeah. eight minutes extra time yeah. and three minutes at the Bizarre. end of the first half. They're just throwing them on for the sake of it at this yeah. point. So the managers need to get a bit more savvy then at, at how they, they do. rotate their they do. players and use players I, more. I, I, th I think that's a part of it and I think it's about creating space for your younger players to come in as well. You get nine substitutes now, which is way more. So there should be never any Mate, reason we're basically why you have turning three American goalkeepers football. on the bench. Mm. But you should never have three goalkeepers on the bench. There are players who are in your youth teams that should be in the squad yeah. and I think it's about managers rotating in better and I think yeah, also some of, squads some of the, will get bigger yeah but some of the teams like Newcastle and Spurs for example the drop off from first team to squad it's is massive. so no, big no, that they can't to, rotate to the point that you need two goalkeepers no not that but I'm talking about when we were talking about managers being savvy in general to avoid yeah. injuries it's so competitive the Premier League that the drop off for certain squads is so big that you don't want to rotate it, that. It much. absolutely is, but if you start looking at unless you are in a one one point difference, yeah, the last ten minutes, if you're losing three one, yeah, and you feel like the game isn't going your way, rotating players and getting them out. I think Chelsea did this against Arsenal, right? And it's just like you have to be smarter. But also, those players are only going to get better and good enough if they play games. No, but some of them, like I could, I, I don't know about other teams. I could talk about Spurs. Like some of them, like Royale, Davis, they've been there for a while now, and they've just been consistently dead. Mm. and then you're playing them at centre-back. But what, what I'm saying like, is I feel, it's I feel, crazy. I feel like teams are going to have to start building second 11s yeah. in a much more efficient way than they yeah. have been historically. They've kind of focused on their 15 and then kind of after that is fine. Now you need a second 11 because the amount of games that are being played and the 100 minutes means you just get a little bit more. And isn't it five subs But now? that's not yeah, reasonable. Five subs. That, yeah. That's not a reasonable expectation on football clubs to have two 11s. Like, that's, I've never known and that. And if you do, everyone's life. going to have the knives out for you because Chelsea have done that and then everyone will say that it doesn't, you know, it doesn't bode well. You've got too many players there because if you're saying about a second 11, you're on about a second 11 of some quality that can compete. Of course. But then you've got so many players but, that you but, upset but the apple cart like, because you've got players like Lavia, for example, who, who, let's be honest, like at the moment, course, yesterday gives it a little bit of context that maybe goes against what I'm saying here, but who will struggle to get in that Chelsea side and yeah, it's a player yeah, that was Chelsea, touted for big things. Ev so. Everyone has a squad that they have to name which is 20 is it 23 players 20, right? 25 Tw 25, 25 but tw tw 23 of them are outfield so the reality is is that people are already building second 11s and Manchester City have had them before and Chelsea definitely have 22 players that they can put into a squad that are competitive and decent enough the drop off isn't as bad we're just saying that you're going to have to give more players a chance and put them in the team. I think Chelsea, um, Newcastle having three goalkeepers doesn't make any sense when there are definitely a play, there's a player there who just by being on the bench and seeing it up close would have benefited from that mm -hmm. opportunity. And I think mm -hmm. it's more of that thinking rather than just holding on to the first 11. Let's, let, it's naive to say that you shouldn't have a squad of 25, a proper squad of players mm -hmm. that can fill in and play at the top level of the Premier League, especially when you're going and you're competing in the Champions League. You've got you're, two you're games every single week. Though. It is naive. But it's it's almost impossible. Like it. No, 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 no. no. There, there, look, there are players that can come in and do a job. If you think about, it, there are twenty teams with twenty players, and think about championship international players. You can build a team that is decent enough. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, but, and yeah, why you it won't work, in my opinion. If you're good enough to play top level football in the Premier League, you want to play every single yeah. week. So you, the, you're immediately going to have disgruntled players. That's why it's so much better for managers to have a settled starting eleven, and that's why historically the best Premier League sides ever have all been settled starting eleven. 
11s, even Manchester City. So to then expect to have a backup of 11 players who are happy to just sit there until they get yeah. their chance. It's just how it's you, unrealistic. What's the this, only this, circumstance you can make those players happy? Money. Uh, no, and no, then you completely break this, your rate, this, wage this structure is, and whatnot this is, by this having them. the point, and I appreciate Arteta was using this as a red herring for his goalkeeper situation, yeah? But we have to change the way that we're looking at the game. If we're saying you could potentially have 105 minutes per game. Mm. Yeah, if you get five minutes extra time in the first half, 10 in the second half, that is what's kind of standardly happening anyway. You then look at it, look at the game in three phases or four phases rather than looking at it in two halves. And you now need to rotate players in the 60th and 70th minute more often than you think you would have to do. So I think there's a mentality shift that needs to happen with coaching and with players as to what playing a game looks like if your game is 150 minutes. I just don't know if with the pressure on managers to get results, if they're going to bow to that and go, yeah, well, my players need a rest when they're like, I need a fucking result here. I mean, fucking heads on the but chopping The pressure block. is worse if you lose De Bruyne for eight months. The, the fact of the matter is, it's like game. talent stacking has been a thing for 15, 20 years in the Premier League. It's been... Like, do, no, 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 you invented that, it. That, that's literally, <laughs> that, that, in my opinion, like for you, that's such a normal thing to say as a Chelsea fan. For me, as a Newcastle fan, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Mate, you're going to have to stacking. do that. You're going to have to do that. No, I know, but... You're, you, you're, you will have to do that right now. You're saying it's been 20 years. One or two clubs have been doing it for 20 years. No one else can afford it. Yeah. So it's just like no, but you can certainly afford to. Hard. You it's can possible. absolutely afford to. We do can't that. because we're fucking being nailed down for you FFP can, because you, you and City have abused it. So we're having to be well, on no, the board. You're, you're so, no, 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 no. So wait a second, wait a second. Barcelona, are they, are they not doing it? Are they not getting in loads of players? They Barcelona can't spend are a completely they spent, bad. Example. They spent they spent three point five million. They spent three point five million in the summer and they bought in three first. But the difference is, is everyone wants to play for Barcelona to a point where they're willing to take wage cuts. That that's been happening. You. Castle aren't that club. That, that's why we're playing a 17-year-old kid in the first team. Like it's oh, it, as much as I see the point. Marvin's making a good point. It's just in in reality, I don't know how it's going to be enforceable. The fact the fact of the matter is, regardless of whether you like it or whether you don't like it, the only way that you'll be able to compete in all fronts next season, season beyond that, if you're going to be going and saying we want to compete for the Champions League, we want to compete for the title, the only way you'll physically be able to do that is if you have a squad of 25 players. And the only way you can do that is if you spend a lot of money. And the only way you can do that is if you find a way around that and we that's the point now where Newcastle are going why are we having three goalkeepers on the bench we're fucked like, well, well, we've I got 13 them? injuries you, lads you asked me this as well I think it was last season mm -hmm. with Man City if they get found guilty Arsenal should have won the league if Man City didn't necessarily cheat quote unquote and I was just like I think a club's job is to find a way to win it's the, that is literally the, the job of your, your owner is find a way. If you are tied up with FFP, mm -hmm. you have to find a way because you cannot get into a situation where 10 players are out injured and you're well, there is a way. Out, there is a way. But you have to you, find you, you, it you, but within the rules. So there's sacrifices. So what you have to do is then drop the, the level of your first team to because money money equals quality. We've just, we know that, right? Mm -hmm. So you spend a bit less on them, a bit more on here, but what you end up is a better overall squad. But do you have the match winners? And let's say one other club, like a Leicester situation happens where they don't have many injuries and they go on a run and you're sitting there with a, a squad that is overall more talented, but the starting 11 isn't. Um, and I think, I just don't think that this is, I think the better scenario is to fucking not make, we play a hundred fucking minutes every game. But we're, but we're all here watching football. We pay the subscriptions. We want to see more and more games. So like, it's hypocritical, isn't it? Because we are there. We're consuming the content we're left, right, and centre. We love, we love football. I, I want to see uh, two games a week easily. I'd love to see that. I'd like to yeah. see more three, club football. Three kick off. So we're, you know, so we're we're actually the ones causing the demand. We're paying the wages of those guys, and so we're only going to see more and more football. And let's be honest, FIFA, UEFA, the Super League, Premier League. Uh, the, the EFL, all of these entities want more games because you know why? Because they make more money out of it, and that's that's ultimately, you know, as much as we think football is a game for the fans and all that stuff, it's not anymore. It's a game to make money, and it, it's fucking good at doing that. And but, that's but, all that we're going to see. Can now. I just say something? And I think that this is something, if if you are employing more, if there's more games, there's more money for the club as well. And then that means that you can get a bigger squad. There's more games to play. But also it means that you can pay the way. I, I just think it, it, it fulfills itself. I, I don't think it's this thing of like, oh, there's too many games. It's like you have to rotate players. I think that's just the way that you, it means you have to get smarter at thinking, I've got these 23. How do I get them all to have 38 games a season and rotate them so they're happy with substitute appearances, starting in different competitions and keep, that's a balance. That's a part of the art. And it's your, it's your owner's job to find the answer. 
is not to complain to FIFA and be like, it's too many games because fans want that. We still want to see. I, I can't stand international football, by the no, way. No, but this yeah. is like, worst this, thing this to ever. Oh, it should be after the season. It should just be one tournament after the season. Don't interrupt my club football. Yeah. Just have it, have it close to Euros. Just do like three weeks where we decide who qualifies. Or, or just less. Just play it. more games. Play three games in that two week period. They play two games mm. and there's no Premier League for two weeks. I was like, Lord. Should we, yeah. should we do a little re recap here of uh, the first half? We're seeing the. Uh, uh, replay of the Garnacho uh, goal where he runs away from the goal to fire that overhead kick in from what 15, 18 yards. That's the goal of the season. Probably. Yeah. It. No, that's done. It's, it's a it? contender. It's done. It's a it, contender. How how is that not the goal? What's a better goal? Maybe because we haven't finished the season and there could be a better one. Like <laughs> as it stands done. right now, it's a contender. Habits yeah. is just warming up. We yeah. don't know yeah. what he's yeah. gonna yeah. do yeah. next week. It's oh. definitely gonna be happening. It's gonna be hard to beat this. I, I agree. It will definitely be hard yeah. to beat this. But there's a lot it's of football still to be played. S since then, though, yeah. uh, it's been all Everton. Yeah, I'd and say so. Man United. Uh, it, it's just. It's one of those things where it's another terrible Man United performance where a bit of quality, um, and we're seeing the Wayne Rooney uh, you know, version of it, I definitely Shinned think Garnacho Gar 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 was better. one was better, yeah, I think. Yeah, Shinned it. it. Didn't even mean But then does the, context, the <laughs> does the context of this game, though? Def yeah, definitely. 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 The Wayne Rooney one seat. meant more. It was Rooney. I'll tell you one thing, though. You know, like yesterday, and I'm still having nightmares from the Newcastle-Chelsea game. <laughs> you scored, it's the shirt, right? You, you, yeah. <laughs> you scored. And straight away, you went after us and you smelt blood and you thought, you know what? Let's not rest on our laurels here. There's another one. We can get another one straight away. Within 90 seconds, you've scored two goals. Mm. Man United get off to a perfect start, which is not something we can say they've done recently or at all this season. They've got off to a really good start. And then it, it is sort of like they have rested on their laurels a little bit. They haven't then. They haven't then absolutely attacked Everton. They're, they're the best shit side I've ever seen. I mm. don't under. I've <laughs> I, I, look, look at their fucking goal difference. Uh, where are we? I'm just going to bring up the Premier League it's table. Good to be right the best now. at something. Their, their goal difference is what uh, they've scored 14, conceded 16, and yet they're in the top six. They've conceded more than they've scored, and they're in the top six. How the fuck does that even work? Mm. It's absolutely insane. Um, because Newcastle are below them. Just, just check this out. We've we've conceded 14. They've conce uh, conceded 16. We've scored 31. They've conceded. Uh, they've scored uh, 14. So, we've we've scored more than double them. Like we are a far better football side than them, game in, game out. But to be fair. They have these moments, and I'm I'm calling it like, oh, it's that bit of luck. Ultimately, they've spent a fuck ton of money, billions on players, and while their football, their fan base complains, oh, we don't have good enough players, yada yada yada. It's like you do have a plethora of quality in there that isn't performing to its fullest extent, but on a, any given moment, as we've seen with Garnacho, it does work. It does yeah. come out for them, but. We're, what we're not seeing, and I'll say this because I've said it before, but is a Ten Hag uh, coaching system, um, you know, being employed. We, we're not seeing players growing into his philosophy and adopting some sort of style week and week out. We're seeing shit games of football with the odd goal, like Bruno uh, Fernandez's goal against was it Burnley? Yeah. Like, that one-off moment where, wow, what a fucking goal. But the rest of it, her, and I can't imagine there's a single Man United fan out there, not one even, mm. who enjoys watching this lot play football. So they can all slag me off and go, oh, you're a Man United hater. You've got to watch this shit, so you should know I'm talking the truth. It's interesting, isn't it? Because the main thing we were levelling at it was the injuries. We were saying, yeah, but there's an injury crisis. And there still is an injury crisis. By the way, there's an injury crisis, surprise, surprise, at Newcastle. Mm. Look how they played yesterday. So there still is a lot of injuries. But now as the weeks go on, we're seeing players coming back. Mason Mount, he's come back. Varane, he's come back, not getting in the team. You know, Luke Shaw back today. We are seeing players come back. And I get that they need a bit of time to get their feet under the table and get going again. But I do think that you can't put their form so far this season on the injuries because now we're seeing players come back and either they're not getting their place back in the team or the style of play isn't changing all that much. And that's why... I've been a little bit bullish when I was saying that I thought Man United would finish lower in the table than Chelsea because I think when you look at the style of play, take away yesterday, but games gone by, you'd think, OK, almost like the underlying numbers, the form would suggest that eventually you carry on playing like that over the game, over course of a 38-game season and you'll finish a little bit higher than where you are in the table at the moment. The way Man United are playing, sometimes I'm looking at them, or a lot of the time I'd say, and I'm looking at it and going, your form would suggest the way you're playing that you're going to finish lower than where I've you are. I've never seen anything like this. I'm, this is serious. Like, I've never seen a, t a team this bad mm. win this many games in a row. Mm. It's, it's like... 
it doesn't fucking make any sense. But have to they me. beaten anyone good? I'm trying to remember. No, my brain wasn't. No, not really. Yeah. But the, but the point is, is even even against like I watched that Fulham game, one of mm. the worst games I've ever sat through in my entire life. And if Fulham had even just had anything, yeah, they'd have fucking won that match. Uh, but it was that last minute goal. Even again. even even the Luton game. I watched the Luton game, right? Mm. And yeah, like Man United, you know, didn't come under massive threat in terms of Luton scoring. But that was more about what. Luton didn't have the ability to do more than what Man United did on that day. So I think no one can deny the way they've played so far. And actually, we look at their best performances so far this season. They probably all three of them came in losses. Basically, by Christmas, we're going to understand whether Man United will be in the Champions League places or not. It's that simple. They've got a run of games coming up now that is a very tough run of games. And if they come through that they and they have some them, decent... Yeah, if they have a decent run of form... Like, let's be honest, all that matters is getting points on the board. And what Man United have done, while they've had a lot of losses, they are right up there. But, but, but mm. and look, I completely agree with you and that's why I picked Man United to finish ahead of Chelsea earlier this season. But... Uh, fans want to see where is this going and when you're watching shit football week in week out and you're nicking results and you're also losing a lot of games like let's not kid ourselves they've they've not drawn a single game in the Premier League they've won like seven lost five it's it's either hit or miss completely but we've got other issues that are telling us where this is going Varane now having a falling out with Ten Hag they're trying to keep it under wraps it's fucking very obvious that there's an issue there and it, it's now Sancho Ronaldo David De Gea, Varane, mm. all big paid, high profile guys, have big money. And these are the ones he's falling out with consistently. And I don't know if it's, you know, in, in, in management, stereotypically, you want the biggest egos on your side. You want to get mm. them under your wing. You want them to be the leaders of the dressing room. It feels like with him, I, I, anyone who potentially could challenge his authority in any way, shape or form, there's the fucking doll. Does this feel like a bit like the, the Tushel sacking waiting to happen? Like when yeah. the new board comes in, Jim Radcliffe actually gets his team out there. He's already got rid of the chief exec. He's going to get rid of all the recruitment team. They're going to start from scratch. Mm. I feel this, to me, mm. has got Tushel all over it. It feels like Ten Hag's the guy waiting there and eventually he'll be sat from there. But I, 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 I don't think know if this is strategic, lads. Just let me theorise this. Man United paid £112 million for Casemiro and Varane. And the rumours are, I mean, they've won 350 grand a week, each of them, roughly. The rumours are that they're next out the door in January or at the end of the season. I mean, I'm thinking if you can get them out the yeah, door. But I don't know if guys. he's singling them out going, fuck this, get there's rid. A there's a culture that you're trying to create. I've been moaning about Man United's culture for about two years on this show. But like, I, I think there's a culture you're trying to create. And I think they don't have a healthy culture for any player to walk into and be successful. And I think the evidence being every top signing that they've made has literally not worked for them. And even the players that they should be developing. Like for me, Alanga leaving for 15 million yeah. is the most, one of the most bizarre letting a player go um, uh, episodes ever. And I think they're just going to really struggle for a period of time. But I think what they'll do is spend the rest of the season structuring and then they'll let him go at the end of the season. And they'll go and try and find a manager who can build a healthy but, culture but of even younger, if that's Hogg, hungrier players. If that's Ten Hag and he wants rid of the big egos, I mean, you've signed some of them. So, like, you yeah, know, but he he's gonna have to be the face of that project of them wanting to get rid of some players because they don't make sense. Yeah, like they, they're not they're not gonna be able to deliver at the high level. Like Amrabat's on the bench today in exchange for Mano, who I know he's a brilliant young player, but you didn't sign him for him to be behind Mano. Otherwise, you wouldn't have bothered to sign him. So I feel like there's like lots of errors that have been made in real time. And for me, for them to have a fresh start, you got to really gut first the back end, and then you're gonna do the playing staff. Well, simultaneously, but straight after. Mm -hmm. um, so in, in history with Man United, Alex Ferguson was always the, the biggest person at the club. He would never be challenged. And as we've seen in the Beckham documentary, when he started becoming a pop star, basically, mm. he was like, fuck this, get out. I don't care how good you are. And since then, the only guy who you could put a, a finger on and go, you are a big enough individual to handle any ego at that club, who's, in terms of what you've achieved, would be Jose Mourinho, mm. second best manager they've had, you know, after, after, after Fergie in my lifetime anyway. The rest of them couldn't handle the big egos. They couldn't handle the pressure. Mm. Ten Hag is now clearly struggling with big egos and I'm the pressure, in my opinion, even though he is somehow getting some results along the way. Um, and I, I think that might be a good idea for them to completely get rid of these big egos because then and only then maybe will Ten Hag be actually seen as the top dog yeah. and, and it will actually be respected. Can I just ask, how many managers are genuinely 
managing big egos really well in world football right now. <laughs> Mbappe is doing absolute chaos madness here. Mm. Holland, I don't think he's even a big ego, but as big as he is, Pep's probably getting the most out of him that he can do. Other than that, most of those big egos are being moved out of those big, big clubs because I just think it's really difficult to maintain in this current climate of football, those types of individuals who think they're bigger and more important than the club. And to be fair, there's not that many of those like world level Let, players though. And yeah. I, I don't think there will be. I think the best players in the world will be the best. But Salah's not a big ego. He's just a great player. And I think there's going to be more of that that's going to be centred than it is. So when you look at someone like Saka, it's not just that Saka is, you know, the best young player in the history of ever, ever. It's his temperament as well. Because like football's you, changed, hasn't it? Like, football's like changed. individual talent was, like, the, the Galacticos were a thing for a reason because, yeah. mm. you know, skill was far more what won your football matches yeah. than athleticism. Now it's a, fo as, as Chelsea found out against systems. Newcastle, it, you've got to be a team and it's about, it's not about individuals, it's mm. about, are you here to live and die for each other on this pitch right You know when you said about... Um, Obviously, Sir Alex never taking any shit from players and whatnot. Mm -hmm. We, you named what six high-profile players that Ten Hag's fallen out with already. Mm. Ten Hag's been there coming up two years or whatever. Did Sir Alex fall out with six in the that amount of time? So, of course, yeah. Like the the evolution of Sir Alex Ferguson at Man United ended or 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 got to a point where no, he weren't taking no shit off players, and and if you went against him, that was it. But I don't know whether two years into the job, it, it seems was, a lot. Oh, no, it, yeah. no, but if you two like years into the job, Roy, Roy Keane will tell you that he wasn't good with a lot of players. Brian Robson. Bruce, Pallister, all got shifted out of the club Stam, really, really quickly. Kanzler. Yeah, Konchelskis. There's loads of players. Uh, Dwight York, Paul Lintz got pushed out and they are big characters. So mm. he, he was going around being called the governor and he was like, you're not governor. And then he, he was sold very shortly after to Inter but, Milan. Because he's so, got such a long reign, we look yeah. at the, all of those players well, across the... But he was yeah, also winning things as he was that, doing yeah. that. So, so, so if yeah, you're winning, as that. Mourinho proved, you can be a bit of a fucking mm. bully. Yeah. And But when you're win. Ten Hag and you're struggling and mm. big egos are turning on you... Well, that's a dangerous proposition. So, isn't it? so let's say, for example, right, and we'll, we'll write off like Varane and Casemiro because they're they're older players, right? But let's say, for example, some of the ones like Jaden Sancho and other players that he might have fallen out with, right? If they do go down that route of thinking, okay, let's get rid of all of those players out of the dressing room and let's let Ten Hag do his thing with uh, the players that he wants there and whatnot. They go down that route of doing it and maybe, like we're seeing from the way that Anthony Alanga was moved on, they do it mm. for maybe a little bit on the cheap, under value, and then it doesn't happen for Ten Hag. And in a year's time, they're looking for another manager. I know you can't cry over spilt milk, but you're then going to be sat there thinking, we could have done with a few of those players here. We yeah. could have maybe done with Jaden Sancho when he yeah. goes on to his next club and potentially is tearing it up somewhere. We could have done with some of the players we let go of. So I think they're in a very difficult situation on on do, we, do they pull the trigger, so to speak, on that and go, right, I tell you what, we'll get these players out of the club and back Ten Hag 100% when, you know... But I think, I think because it's brand new owners, I think they will have an appetite to completely get a brand new squad in. Versus, like, if you are the existing manager, that sounds like an uh, owner. That's a nightmare. Well, you want to make an impact. On. You're going to want to make an impact. You're going to say to yourself, we want young, hungry players from around the world to come and represent Man United and have values and a system of how we are going to play. That's going to be built around Ten Hag. And then overall, it's going to get rid of him and bring in someone who's going to allow that system to actually take part. I think the biggest advert for not needing the biggest coach in the world is actually Tottenham. Like the fact that what you did, we sat here last year and was like, they're going to finish eighth. Mm. It was a universal round the table, mid -table. Se seventh, eighth, mid table. And actually, you can see that someone can get you playing really good football. Mate, so this is what I know when the Man United fan base, so, when the Man United yeah, fan base go, oh, we've tried loads of managers. I'm like, has Ange not just turned around a club yeah. in, in in like three weeks? Like, there are managers that are available, but the thing is, is that the whole I, the whole thing about building a club, and again, this is what Manchester United, uh, City have done. This is what Arsenal have done: is built a club structure that's so clear that if you put a manager in, you know who he's like. His team are the direct reports. There's a philosophy. Like I've mm. actually seen these documents that are a philosophy of what these clubs are about, and I'm like, actually, that's what Man United and Chelsea don't have. And I feel like the structure for me is like gets transformed every time there's a new manager or every time the ownership changes, a whole transformation of everything. That's too big but of I've, a project. You know, I've seen I've seen more in a short space of time. I've seen more um, philosophy and style from Pochettino in this Chelsea team than I have at Man United. To me, that's concerning. Sure. Like in those big games against Man City, Chelsea, you could see what what's kind of mm. could be Chelsea of the future. 
I'm watching Man United week in, week out, even though they're getting results. There's no style of play. But Chelsea are in a much better position than Man United. An, How? An, an Look at the table. What do you no, mean? No, but as in like Chelsea actually have future. players. They have a whole group of players that you're like, I would take this group of players over than what Man United have got oh, right now. Oh, because they all got old players. Definitely. Man United. Just, they're, just, they're not even really good. And, like, and, and interesting team right now. We did a like a a rating 10 hog signings uh, video on the show a couple of weeks ago and it was about seven flops to four good signings but the mm. issue was is when you looked at the good signings we were like Ericsson on a free yeah. bring, bringing back uh, Johnny Evans on a free mm, yeah. like and the ones that were flops were like Anthony 85 million like yeah, 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 it, yeah. so you know um, his track record's really under scrutiny and actually I wanted to do a Arteta uh, version. We'll do rating Arteta signings now. Mm. Um, we're at 49 minutes, uh, 52, 53 seconds played. Um, it's still 1-0 to Man United. So, first up, Declan Rice. 10 out of 10, really, isn't it? Good signing. Good signing. Great signing for yeah, me. I, signing. I called him world-class recently. Mm. People were saying, they're speculating whether or not he was. But he's not world-class. Ultimately, he's a, he's a hell of a signer. You know? Yes. I, no, I had, yes. I had this conversation, yeah, because he, he is, because it's about the players that are in your position right now. And for me, how many other DMs would you sit there and be like, Only he starts behind? Well, West Only Ham Rodri. fans were really offended. In the, I've seen a lot of them saying, yeah. he's been world class. Well, you got but to, now you're saying he's world class. Well, you've you got to do it in the bigger, the bigger stage. You've got to do it in a bigger club, bigger yeah. infrastructure, but bigger manager. You wait the whole season then and not just say it after no, three months we're, we're in seeing, this bigger look, club and bigger we're, structure. We're, look, we, we've all seen players that have come in and done form. Yeah, and yeah. they fall for a little bit. And then there's players that come in and genuinely create an aura and an uplift around their role. I think he's more in an aura and uplift place. Yeah. So I would just say he is world-class right now because only Rodri can touch him on the world stage. He comes, look, from, he comes yeah. from good stock. Yeah, good he stock. does. And look, the good, <laughs> news, the good news is, is he won his, his European trophy <laughs> By the before, he went, uh, anyway, before he went to Arsenal. Anyway, yeah. Chelsea can take credit. Okay, Kai Havertz, speaking of Chelsea... Uh, flop or uh, cop? It's, it's to be determined because, like, again, I, I don't right know. now. But we got to give one. Right we got to give one right now. I, I can't call him a flop. <laughs> I seen the. I seen his lips go. <laughs> no, because I can't. I can't call him a flop. I can't. <laughs> Definition of a flop. Sixty-five Definition million flop. flop. Can we can we stop asking Chelsea players to talk about Chelsea uh, non Chelsea I, things? I celebrated <laughs> more when he left the club than than most games this season. <laughs> okay, um, that's a flop. Uh, Craig, are you saying flop on or, or, or a cop on Havertz? Uh, right now, a flop. Yeah, uh, right I'm, I'm going to agree. I will give you that one though, winner that, that, is that not enough. It, it can change, but you could say that about every player in here. Declan Rice could, I'm not envisioning it will happen, but he could completely lose form and then all of a sudden it changes. But I'm just saying at this moment in time, flop. There are better DMs than Declan Rice and World Football, by the way. I just want to take name, it name, name, name Kimmich is better than him. Uh, onto, what do you mean? Um, <laughs> and Tuchemani is better than him as well. Onto, um, That's my opinion. Ben White. That's not a flop. Eight Million I reckon euro. he's worth more. Now. I would, I'd say, even at that price tag, success. I think Ben White's yeah. a good player. He'd prefer to be called Benjamin as well. Oh, by the ben, way, Benjamin White. Over now, is it? <laughs> Why is that? Penalty. This over, is a penalty. That, that's yeah. his actual name. He, he said penalty. it. Like yeah, that's oh yeah. my God, Man United are going to get a it's penalty, a penalty. Yeah. He's, penalty. He's a penalty. done this intentionally, hasn't he? He's looked for this. It's a penalty. Yeah. What is Ashley? No, there was no he? need for his foot to go there. Ashley's had a stinker of a season, by the way. He's been oh, no. sent off in games. Oh, we'll just, just hang up your boots for now, mate. Seven? Yeah, yeah just hang it up, man. I think we're the same age. The game's passing you by now. Look, this lot are still paying me. I'm fucking going to keep turning up. You know, I'll just this. But the airlines are unreal. But why yeah, are they but still you used to go by choice before. <sighs> it's a pen. It's, what are they it's inside at? the area. They're it's a pen. Yeah, it's yeah. a pen. It's definitely Look a pen. at him. He ain't even played the ball. Who's going to take it for United? Fuck. Bruno. Fernandez. They're going to give it to Rashford, Bruno. man. Bruno. Charlie. Yeah, he's going to have a look at it. He's going to check it. And we know what that means. That means it's not, uh, isn't it? It does. No, no he's, he's looking, looking at it. What if you work at VAR, you're supposed to be able to tell this shit. Why does a referee need to be involved here? You're telling me you can't see that's a penalty. Because he's got to explain why. He didn't see it in real time. He didn't see it in real time. This is retrospective. No, but I thought VAR would make the decision for him and go, yeah, that's a pen, boss. Get it. Once they go over to the monitor as well, what do you reckan the percentage is of time that you don't? Honestly, like 95% it goes. I'd say higher. I'd say 98% of the time. Yeah. It, it, it looks like he's, all, just, just he's looking though. for it though. Can I just say something? He Even if he it. doesn't do that, the ball get, he doesn't get the ball here. No, no, no. no, no. He, doesn't. he doesn't, doesn't get the, get the ball. ball and he doesn't end it, up He doesn't end up scoring. It's a terrible touch the, from Martial. He doesn't end up and he's scoring. very lucky to be brought no, but down. This is, yeah, this is very yeah. smart attacking play though because he's left the leg out. He knows exactly what yeah. he's doing. I love how every footballer does the old... 
Does yeah, the referee take yeah, that? Yeah. Does the referee take that? It completely writes off the foul. I don't think he has to. No, no. I think it's based on the context. It's based on the context. Is it a foul in the box? The question is yes. So it should be a penalty. And looks like Michael Dawson. Yellow card. Oh, he's red carded. No. Oh, he's given him a yellow card. No, he said no yellow card. He gave a dive originally. Oh shit. Gave a dive. He gave him. Fucking hell! I didn't see that. Yeah. So Man United have a penalty. Uh, Ashley Young is looking Retire, distraught. Oh, no. mm. Good hairline, though. <laughs> Great hairline. <laughs> Great hairline. Uh, I've got to say, because he was bald for a while by yeah. choice, a bit yeah. like myself, but every now and then he just mm. likes to flex. Confused. I'll rate that. <laughs> Make your I'll mind up. Right. Guessing. England's number one. Can he step up no. with his little <laughs> arms? This is a preview for the Euros. So, yeah, can we just say that Benjamin White, just to be very clear, is definitely not we're, a block. We're going to come back. <laughs> we're going to come back, <laughs> there, don't worry. We'll be right and back. And we'll make sure we call him I've got to make sure I represent well. Ars Arsenal yeah. fully. Yeah. Benjamin. Oh, Who's God. taking it? Rashford. Imagine, imagine after what has been a hell of a start of the season by Everton. Mm. Wow, they end up right. getting relegated mm. purely because of this points deduction thing. Yep. That would be brutal. It, it's not going to end I up I knew they were going to do this, man. It's not going to end up being 10. I think it will be reduced. Bro, it's... What do you mean? It's, I, I think on appeal it will be reduced. Do, do, you, give them do you think they're going to change so them? I think, I think they'll I, appeal I, it. I, I've heard that, yeah. that on appeal they'll probably get reduced to seven six. or something. Yeah. 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 yeah, but knowing them, they'll do it like four games before the end of the season. Not, be so no, so you shouldn't shit. be fucking around with stuff because that will yeah. impact the, the psychology of other teams' performances. Well, you they, mate, you, this has like to be Tuesday last It is a can of worms. They've literally made their own bed that they're going to have to lie in because it's going to be coming from all angles. If Rashford misses this. Yeah, anyone think that Bruno will miss it? Bruno had the ball and he's given it to him. Anyone think that Rashford might miss this? No. Rashford versus score. Pickford. What this. happens? Goal! Oh, what a finish! Great pen. Top bins, left hand yeah, side. Well done, Rashford. He's been watching Palmer. <laughs> do, do, you know, do, do you know what's really interesting? Yeah, it doesn't because I know they've won again. Yeah, but they just don't play well. Terrible. So it, it it just becomes a story of like cool, but like we don't know what you're doing as I'm a so club, annoyed. as a team. It's just like, this doesn't really mean very much. You know, a, a lot of Man United fans get really annoyed at me. And I'm guessing a lot of us around this table for the fact that they are putting wins together. And we're still sort of coating them in a way. And I think that it's just because on their performances, they're not looking good. But I do think if it was Chelsea, if it was maybe Newcastle, if it was another team that one of us supported here and they were getting the wins... I'm I'm quite optimistic at the way I look at things as a fan. I'd be sat there going, listen, it's fine because we're getting the wins when we're not playing well. Well, what happens when we start playing well? The thing is here, we probably are all looking at it going, we don't think under this manager you're going to no, start no, no, playing no, no, well no. anytime soon. That, that, that doesn't add up though, does it? Because like, again, with, with, with Man United this season, we've had more than enough games and even last season, let's not act like they were playing great last season. Mm. They had some great games last season, but there was many times where they played shit mm. and Rashford and Bruno were digging them out of shit uh, last season. I, I'm, if Man United fans are happy watching this, mm. God bless. You enjoy it. Enjoy it. Fill your boots. Watch as much of this football as you can because fucking hell, I pity them, right? I really wouldn't want to watch this crap. It's... <gasps> oh! Oh my God, Alana with a wonder save. That You've got to say, great moment. again, the best yeah. football wow. by Everton, by the way. Um, yeah, it's true. It, was this gay? Gay, yeah. Oh, you know what? I feel Daesh is one of those managers that get, get kind of oh. crucified by being in impossible projects. I would like to see him in an actual project that could have some legs. What, a bit like what happened You hire him then. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it? If he goes to Chelsea, I think he'd do great there. I think, you know, he'll really get the most out yeah. of Sterling. But, but, yeah, but what I was saying is like... <laughs> yeah, when we're in a relegation battle next year, we know we're calling then. Yeah, yeah, I'll take him. <laughs> you know, they've played 13 games this season. They haven't played well in any Premier League games this season. Like, mm. Whatever the results are, to me, think what you just want, you know, because I'm not saying anything happening there mm. where I'm like, you can put stock in that. There's a repeatable process. You're really learning as a team and you're, you're actually clicking as a system and you can see where if you take certain players out and put other players in, <laughs> like with Newcastle, that there's a repeatable process. I don't well, what, say that. What about, if, what about, and just to, you know, play devil's advocate, what, what about if they have their actual 11? Because they haven't had that this season in fairness to them. What about when they have all their players fit and everyone's back could they have an argument to say maybe then maybe they, they start playing yeah. that football that, that they want to play? Fair play. But I, right now, I think they've got a lot of their best players in uh, in previous uh, games. Hoyland, Rashford, Bruno Fernandes uh, fit. You know, the, you know the best I've seen them play this season? Against Bayern Munich. They conceded yeah. four. That's the game. They can see, and, and by the way, whenever they scored, Bayern went, yeah, we'll just turn a little bit up. And then we whack it in the goal straight away. They conceded they, four They there. got bitch slapped by Bayern Munich, like like a big brother. Do you know mm. what I mean? It wasn't even, and yet that's the best I've seen them play. So I, I think Man United fans should be smart enough to say what the fuck I'm saying is obvious. Like I'm not, 
I don't no, know. I, I, they I, won't. They I, won't I, care I, as long I as they're winning. Detroit United fans. fans is very, very sensitive because they've been winning for so long. If you're an adult Man United fan, you only you grew up with them winning mm. absurdly. So the idea that you're not good and there's no real hope for the future is hard to take. It's like trauma. I think there's hope though. I think I think it's just not with Ten Hag like, un, unless it, it's not gonna out happen of nowhere. Course. You start seeing the football turn, and then you've got all right. We're, we're, we've got the match winners and the football now, but I don't see any reason why that's going to happen I, I, unless he unless he signs about five other players and changes it again, which he's already signed a lot. I disagree with you ever so slightly there when you say you do think there's hope because it depends how you define hope but say for example with let's say even even when Newcastle had suffered a couple of losses I was saying to you no but you boys like from an outsider without a horse in the race you're really good like when you play well you're really good there's been little bite-sized moments of Chelsea so far this season when I look at our style of play and I'm like mate if we can get this consistency we can beat anyone and with Man United we haven't seen that so I think the hope yeah okay can be there in the long term but in the short term I don't think if I'm a Man United fan I'm being honest with myself I'm sitting there looking at it going yeah but quite soon it's going to click for us you know and what I think it is they've had so many managers where they've been gassed up and excited that they're just like fuck me this has to work now mm. uh, so they're in for it all the way and I rate that like you know you've got to back your manager and all of that but again Everton have been the better side here and mm. Everton not I, I, in the relegation. I, I, I would say, yeah, that the Newcastle project, yeah, when Eddie Howe came in, is actually easier than the Man United project now. I disagree massively. Because the, the thing is... This we is, had two uh, points from seven no, games. But what you have to understand is, yeah, you probably had, amongst your squad of 23, you had 10 people who were going to work hard with the right motivation, who were running to the ground. They know what their talent is, yeah? Man United feel like they have players who are trying to do fancy flicks and overhead kicks. That China, he signed China, them? Yeah, but trying Anthony? to create a culture out of Anthony, Sancho, and Martial, and all of that is going to be an absolute nightmare job. Like, do you, you have to get rid of so many players and find players who are willing to work hard. I agree. At our club at Man United. I don't so know if, it's if, if it's a job. fair comparison with Newcastle because I think people have forgotten just how bad we were no, when they... Eddie Howe took over. But yeah, it's a hard job. That's that's not for debate. It's probably the hardest job in world football. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean I'm going to give him credit some for what of, Some of the signings, though, like you mentioned a few players there that weren't signings, right? Mm. But I could mention a few Newcastle players that weren't signings. Joe Linton. No one was having Joe Linton. Yeah. He, 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 weren't, he weren't a great player. You know what I mean? Even Jamal Lascelles, we spoke about Fabian Shaw. No one was looking at Fabian Shaw and going, he's one of the best centre-backs in the league. And Eddie Howe's Even done when that. Trippier was available. Ne he, no one came in for no, Kieran Trippier. No. And even when... The takeover went through. You guys were still favourites for relegation. I don't think many teams had stayed up from that. No, point. Maybe, everyone maybe said one team. We literally that needed was a conversation. Richest Champions club League in the form. championship. Richest yeah. club in the championship. That was all that was getting said. And it's actually mad because earlier on in the season, yourself and KG, top man, but you were you were having a bit of a debate over who was the better manager. And I get context can change everything at this point. You know, Newcastle are doing well, but. For me, it's so clearly Eddie Howe out of the two of them. Easily. Like, going on transfers brought in, going on players he's turned around, going on the job he's yep. done from where they were at to where he's took them to. Uh, who? Eddie Howe and who? And Ten Hag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I think it would be harder. I think if Eddie Howe went into Man United, I don't think he'll get the same results. It's kind of hard. Mm -hmm. it's, it's different when you're, when the, like, for instance, taking over Everton right now and giving them money, and the money being more about the stability of the staff at this point. The staff are bloody sitting there thinking they're going to probably lose their jobs any minute. So the mood that happens around at that, that level is different. So if you turn that around in those types of clubs, you get a much better response than you do at these kind of big luxury clubs where everybody thinks they're coming here to be the second coming of the best players that have been here. And they're not that good. They're just not that good. And I feel like there is no real understanding of how big of a job it's going to be to get an 11, let alone a 15 and 20, what we were talking about, having two 11s. Yeah. Building that from this I is know, going to I, be way I just harder. get frustrated, though, because I think Ten Hag gets a lot of slack based on Man United jobs really hard, yada, 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 as if it's the impossible job when... Every football manager has a hard job. Like, let's stop giving him brownie points just because being, you know what I mean? Like, mm. it, this idea that, you know, when Ole Gunnar Solskjaer left Man United, there's a reason no one fucking wanted him. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, it, it's not like, oh, well, he should never be given a job exactly. in the first place. But the same with Louis van Gaal, the same with the fact that his Mourinho's reputation was damaged it, afterwards. It's, it's this, like, this club it finds destroys you players and managers. Yeah, it finds you out. <laughs> oh, my dear. Um, so let's carry on. Ben White. Flop uh, or cop? Cop. 
Cop. 58 million euro. Yeah, yeah, cop. Cop. Uh, Gabriel Jesus, 52 million cop. euro. Oh, jury's still out on that one. I would say cop. jury's still out. And considering that don't score we're goals. over a year and a half into... Listen, is he a good player? Yes. Does he do a job at Arsenal? Yes. Is he someone I think you can hang your hopes on? I don't think so. But then I don't think that's anywhere enough to call him a flop. So I think they never call him a flop. I, so. yeah, he, I think they like him because he looks techie. Maybe, that's all it is. He's I, a techie let, let player. Me know he looks Arsenal good. He's silky. Yeah. No, because we love silky players. Mm. Like We love players that look good on the eye. But, but in retrospect, would Arsenal fans wish they'd spent that money differently or not? Do, no. Ivan Tony does more than him how up much, front. How much did they pay? 52 million. 52 million. He, first and foremost, he took us up a level. So we went from being in fifth place, just... Yeah, into being title contenders. Other players did that. No, yeah. no, he him didn't. Him no, he Zinchenko didn't. Other players are did. a massive. Him and Zinchenko are a massive part no. of that. And and the thing is, that, again, like sometimes celebrating players who don't do the one thing that they're meant to do is very difficult and a table full yeah. of people who are dying to say that Arsenal are not as good as they are. But I do think he upped the levels for our forward play and the dynamism. I feel like in the first fifteen games of last season, he was such a problem okay. between him. Martinelli and Saka have created a fluid free that are very, very dangerous. Okay. So he flop is my favorite. Flop or cop? Gabriel I Jesus. think it's too harsh to say flop, but it's definitely not been uh, an elite signing for them. So, so what, is I'm there in between or no? Flop. Is there no in between? No it's in one between. of the two. We can leave them out. Uh, let me, I'm going to be nice and say cop. I'll be nice and say cop, but that's me being Mar very Marvin. nice. Cop. Oh. Yeah, I suppose you've got to go. Yeah, cop. all right. Yeah. We'll give him that one. Uh, Thomas Partey, 50 million euro. Cop. He's not even on, the bench. On, on what a second place finish because that's the only real thing over the course of a season the only body of work he's got is helping them have that second place finish for 50 million the, the fact of the matter is is that Arteta doesn't even fancy him so to say that he's a cop is is a weird one 50 million three or four seasons out of him I think last year he was one of the best centre midfielders in the league one yep. of the and I just feel like that in, in this particular day and age of value of players mm. I wouldn't call him a flop I wouldn't call him a flop yeah. he's I don't, Jorginho, I, 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 he's if Jorginho's flop. getting in the team over Partey he's a flop he's not a flop he's not, he's not, not even in the squad would right you, now For would, you look, at, would you look at him as a signing and say Partey was a flop no I don't, I don't think he was but if he if he's quality he should be playing right now I feel like now we're just getting bored because we haven't had enough um, flops so now we're just adding <laughs> flops that no exist. well but the rule set we've been given <laughs> is cop or flop yeah, yeah. he's not if a you flop. Can go I back don't, in I don't time, a flop if you can go back in time with that amount of money do you make that yes. transfer again yes yeah I don't think it's a flop he anchored us through some of the worst times when we had bloody also Mustafi, he spent a lot of time on the bench Colossus, though Nack, I mean he spent a lot of time on the sideline injured, injured as well though okay there's there, there's a few fairly new players like Timber uh, I'm assuming hard, too hard to say, but he was brilliant uh, in preseason and in a he did look good yeah. like out of this world Vieira flop I'll say that's flop. a flop flop and I, I don't think he's actually a flop but I think just in the context of flop he, he hasn't broken into the first yeah. team so he's a flop Odegaard flop <laughs> it's rubbish this season nah Jake he needs the man yeah I'd okay. pick that up really, um, definitely, one of the, <laughs> definitely one of the better signings they've done yeah mm. uh, like of all time really that's one of Arsenal's best yeah. bit of business ever Brilliant. right uh, Ramsdale uh, cop how much 28 million euros yeah that's fine cop I'll say quite. 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 They'll make money on that. I like Rambo. They'll, they'll make money on Rambo. It, it, also, he solidified that position for us when uh, Leno was never going to be that guy. So Leno is good though, isn't he? He's good, but he's not. He's not what we needed, and mm. he wasn't working for right us. now. Arteta's faring a lot better than uh, Ten Hag did, because um, <laughs> it was seven four on that one. I think most of these have been good. Uh, Trossard. Cop, cop, oh, yeah, big time. Good, good, good sir. The, the the Mudrick context on that does a lot for him. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Because he's everyone always goes, oh, yeah, we were in for Mudrick, and then we got Trossard, and you look at the numbers, and you can't really yeah, disagree yeah, with it. Yeah, yeah but you, also though, his context is important because we don't know how Mudrick would have played in this Arsenal team that are thriving. Uh, he'd, he'd have proved been brilliant. He'd have proved been a lot better. Because he's coming to an unsettled Chelsea yeah. club team yeah. at the moment where everything's yeah, yeah. a bit. But like... I, I just think Trossard just does something different, and I think he can play in a yeah. tricky position. He, Yesterday, seeing him playing him deep depot, I, I like that and I want to see more of that saying about how Mudrick would have been in this Arsenal team by the way there's every chance in about a season's time from now with the track record recently you find out yeah, how Mudrick does in an yeah. Arsenal team <laughs> uh, yeah, true. Gabriel oh, that's a cop cop, cop. Oh, yeah that's a cop. I was thinking who's he on about yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. just a new bloke I don't know how to pronounce this Jacob Kiriel oh he's a massive flop that fella no 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 no. no he's I don't a even cop know He's a proper tech. Like, I don't know much about he, him. When he comes in, he's just so Never solid. And we don't notice the drop off, and that's really hard to find him. He's You're making names. How much is he? How much is he? He's what? Was 20 12, games a season? I think it was 12 million. Yeah. That, and 25 that's why I say, million euro. That, 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 this, this is what I say, yeah, about finding those players who can come in and do that mm. without what, feeling like they um, have to start. Tommy Asu? 
Oh, that's cop. A, another cop. cop. Arsenal, Arsenal fans love him. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's, he's he was well, great man. when he first came. He had a troubled second season, but he's become great again. So I, I think for me, another one. That's he should be playing more. 12 million? Yeah. It's just where. Yeah, he's good. <laughs> what you're seeing, actually, with well, the more we're going through these, is that Arteta's... Um, Spending is a lot less extreme than Ten Hogs in terms of like there's a lot more middle uh, payments out, like yeah. your 40, 50, 30s. Oh. Um, whereas Ten Hogs seem to be like huge money 50, or 70, very low. Yeah, yeah. Um, Jorginho flop is that 15 million, right? Uh, uh, around about, I'll right. say, I'll say cop because the context of it is that we needed a center midfielder so bad we had no nanny out and he's not harmed us in any way. I'd say he's a flop. Yeah, he only uh, just he, he only just gave the ball to Son at the Emirates. I would say mm. if and they could and go Madison, and then we went and got equal anyway. If okay. Arsenal fans could go back in time and say, "Let's not sign Jorginho," I'm back. sure they back. would do that. Mm. I'm no. sure no, they would. Not, you would. Not, not, you would rather sign another CM. It, no, if you if you said more. no, if you said, would you prefer Douglas Luiz over him? Yes. He was our original one. I would say yes. Do I regret him coming to the? T no, no, that's, that's that's too high. But. Douglas Weeze, like there's three or four what, what, other different options. That Arteta are must Weez. rate his sort Arteta of personality and mentality though, because he's and given leadership. captain's armband. Yeah, once or and twice, he's a leader. He? So, but I would say flop. Just it's 50 million. If I've, got, if I've got to put him in one. I'm not Again, put him 15 in million for a was it Euros winner? Like he's he's won stuff. Champions League winner. 15 million. What's the cost of that compared to the amount of players? Look, they were trying Amrabat for 26, whether he's on loan with a view to be 26. Mm -hmm. Casemiro for Yeah, but no one's much. calling and Amrabat look a cop. how much that is. Yeah, but also for Casemiro. I don't think Casemiro's a flop though, by the way. I, I do. What? Last season, he, he was good yeah, last season. He's looking very This season this he was shit, but yeah, last season he was Next good. Next one, Lukonga. Flop. Flop. And by the way, no. it's a bargain. It's a low cost. Even to call it he's a, flop. a flop. If we get our money back, I don't even think he's it's a just flop. a 17.5 million euro. It's a, flop. One. It's a flop. It's a bargain. Uh, Pablo Mori. Flop. flop. Yeah, that was a flop. Uh, and then it, it is pretty much a small amount of money. Marquinhos. Uh, da David, <sighs> David Rea. 3 0. I can't believe my uh, 3 0. Oh, yes. Ray is hard to tell, but I, I wouldn't. I, I think it's a cop. Mm -hmm. I think it's just that because we love Ramsdale so much, we, he needs to up the level a bit more to be considered our hero in the same way. Arteta's track record, pretty fucking good then. Mm. Pretty consistent, pretty, re, re, really good. One of the best in the Premier League right now. Mm. Well, well, that just shows. But how also, there was a, there was a Arteta year. Arteta or they Edu. Got, yeah, that's the well, thing. Well, I, I would call them a team. I wouldn't separate okay. them. But there was a year where they tried to sign big names. So we tried to get Willian and all that type of stuff. Those signings, obviously, that year was pretty poor. But since that point, mm -hmm. he's been immaculate in his view of what kind of players mm -hmm. need to join. Good first off. What, was the, what right? was the highest um, price tag on those? It's around uh, 60 million. Um, oh, of so, course. So, sorry, the Declan Rice. Declan Rice uh, um, yeah. was over 100 um, million Havertz. euro. Yeah. Uh, 116, actually, yeah. if you're talking euro. And then Kai Havertz. Um, and then Ben White. So when, we, when, when we go on like elite level money, I'm saying so far one cop, one flop in terms of Havertz and Rice. But obviously the whole, the record as a whole, I think looks really good. So I'd be interested to see when they're spending the higher bracket, the 70 million plus, how many end up being cops. Because I, 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 more often than not, we all know around this table, more often than not, you spend over 70, 80 million and they're usually a flop. Yeah. The fact of the matter is that Edu has won the award for the best director in yeah. Europe. Really? So he's won the yeah. Ballon d'Or of directors. I think that's yeah. well, so there well you go. Like, uh, mm. looking, That's looking better than how, the actual Ballon d'Or. How <laughs> different this feels from the conversation we had about Ten Hag. And look, I know... Uh, I make a lot of points about them, but ultimately, like when when I went back through that, I was like, mm. "Fucking Tenali's been banned for gambling, mm. and he's ha still having a better season than Mason Mount." Yeah, like <sighs> you can't you can't blame me. You saw know a mean? very it, it interesting number about Mason Mount the other day. Did you see the expected assists, 0 0.05, which equates to one assist every twenty five matches. Well, but but that's what Freaks. I'm saying. Like you Tenali think? already has an assist and a goal, and mm. he probably will still carry that ahead of Mount at the end of the fucking season. Mm. So I wasn't deliberately being harsh on Ten Hag. We're literally just saying what we think um, about the currently, and that we're being honest about Arteta. Like we're giving him his credit. Yeah. No one here has a Norse fan outside but, of but can, I, can I say something though? Can I say something? I have to be that guy though. I have to be the mm -hmm. guy. Arteta. In his first season, or it wasn't really his first wow. season, he took over a season, won at FA Cup, right? Mm. Went on one at FA Cup. First full season, eighth. Second full season, eighth. Third full season, what was it? Fifth. Fifth. In his first season, Ten Hag, he got them Champions League and a trophy in his first season. 
And we're yet to see how this season's going to play out. My biggest criticism of Ten Hag right now is their style of football. That's it. If he can carry them through these results and keep getting points on the board and they keep rising up the table and then their first 11 comes back in and then they start to find a, some sort of resemblance of his football, whatever that is, then we could be having a different discussion about him and Arteta because Arteta has been at Arsenal for a long time now. Like what, what we're seeing with Arteta at Arsenal right now is what we really should be seeing after three and a half, four well, seasons we, at we, our club. We, were also, we also beat Man City. We also beat Chelsea to get in the semi-finals to win that FA Cup. Like the, and we also saw... No, but that wasn't even his team. That's why also, I don't even talk about that. He just inherited saw, a team and they yeah, went and did that. That was points. Emery's team. Yeah. Okay. That's even harder, I think. I feel like that's is even it? harder. Speaking yeah. of nah. inheriting, though, if you, let's, if you look at the amount of money and value and players Ten Hag and Inherited compared to what Arteta inherited. Three nil. Three nil. What a finish. Um, what was that there, Marshall? Marshall. Yeah, Marshall. Me. Blast from the past. That was a very good. That'll be one of his uh, nine well. this season. I have to say, guys, three nil against Everton when they've been up for this game as much as they have is a very good result. Yeah, but yep, Everton are shit, though. No. They're where's not the shit. They're where's not the shit. Where's the quality? Everton are not shit. Where is the quality? They're, They're a mid-table team this year. They haven't had. I, I, how many shots have they had on target? Everton are an organised team. You don't you don't go there and get three nil at Goodison. Well, there's a reason I they've asked been you in a relegation where the quality on the field is. Where is the row. quality? Where's the quality? No, uh, Everton no, have been in a relegation scrap last two years in a row. And although they started well, and he's we were all team. saying Everton are doing well for Everton. But I don't know, like, like now that they they've had this point deduction, I wouldn't be surprised if they go down. But they've been a bit unlucky today. They've had four very clear cut chances and and not been able to convert any of them. That's not unlucky. They, just didn't, United, they didn't even hit on so, target. That's down to lack of quality. So at home they are quite difficult to beat. So this is a good result for Man United, and we have Great to give finish. them that. And Martial scoring, you know, is good. And Rashford, who's been struggling for goals. I mean, is the it, best thing about penalty? the Martial goal is that they might actually get a bit of value for him when they finally let the fucker go. Mm. Um, Three 0 clean sheet. Again, I think that um, you know that that goal does feel deserved because Everton have switched off. But when the game was still in the balance, Everton were the better side yeah. comfortably, in my opinion. But but this this is where individual quality comes in, and I think this is where you have Fernandez and you have Rashford Not doing quite. bits, Garnacho doing that. That's a, that, that's a one a, in, a penalty a and an overhead goal. kick from eighteen yards. Like, yeah, that, you, you know what can you fucking do about that if yeah. you're Everton? Really, it's like one of those things. Um, do you know what's funny about like? The, the teams right at the top of the table they we say this over and over again oh they didn't play well but they got the result and then they went on to win the league or they went on to get Champions League when are we going to get to that point with Man United like, when are we going to go when are we going to say oh do you know what they actually are playing shit but do you know what matters. do you know what they actually get results they actually do it, get results Man United I, I think we're, we're all there we're just saying we've never seen well personally I've never seen a team play this bad and get this many results like mm. and it's shown by the fact that what is this their eighth win of the season and they've lost the other five like they 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 either win or they're absolutely terrible do you know what I mean and even when they win they're pretty bad no, so not, my, my point it's is it's a weird situation my point is it's a time thing right it feels like and well it doesn't even feel like it's a fact that in the modern game we do not give managers time anymore right mm -hmm. we don't give managers time and Arteta seems like one of the managers that got time that Arsenal were actually patient with him they said look well, we're building something here. I don't know, maybe they, they saw the potential, clearly. Yeah. They saw the potential and they knew they had an idea and a project. But my point is, though, they still gave the time. And sometimes you just got to go through that. Because there were uncomfortable parts early in our tenure plenty. where some people were saying, oh, remember, your fans had to come out and say, it's a process. <gasps> oh, oh, they've just hit the bar. Everton have just hit the bar. It was chance. so close. But yeah, great kept using the word process, there. process. It's a process. And it has come to fruition. You lot are fighting for the title now. You're back in the Champions League. I don't know if that's going to happen with Ten Hag. What, what is All I know is, it's been one season and in that one season, he got top okay. four and a trophy. I think so this we is just... a great point by Craig. Uh, it, it's just that um, it is different to what, what Arteta inherited, in my opinion. I think Arteta inherited a lot um, less expectations, um, uh, a worse squad overall, and, a, and less um, a, ability to spend as much money as Ten Hag did so yeah. quickly to fix it. He definitely so didn't spend when that you much have a, a billion pound squad and, he now, and then you're able to spend 400 million on said squad, you're then expected to do better things quicker. Yeah. The, the time that you're given isn't as much as Arsenal because the expectations are tapered to what your resources are. 
well. But Arsenal have spent a lot of money. They have since then, but what I'm saying is... In, not, under his not, tenure. Not, but, yeah, his but the point year. is... is under his tenure. But, but, you but, just spent but, 100 million but, on one player. But with Arteta, though, it was a more of a gradual thing where you're going, right, we've got you however many transfer yes. windows to get through in order to get us from A to B. What Man United did is they fast-tracked that process, but we're not really seeing the results of that fast-tracking yet. Arteta didn't go around and spend as much money in the first year At as what Ten Hag... Has, Ten Hag what, has any of the players Ten Hag signed cost 100 million? Well, that's one player well, and that's very recently. Hoyland for though. 70 million. Huh? Casemiro for almost 70 million. It's a lot. How many players? Anthony, 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 Anthony about 90 million. Anthony's 90 million. Yeah, million. yeah, it was a lot. It was a they lot. Spent, Sancho was 75. Was lot, but, Anthony, yeah, but, these players were, but Anthony was stupid. Let's be real. That was just stupid. Yeah, like, why are you paying 90 million for, for a, a, a Eredivisie player? By that's the way, so silly. Also remember, yeah, that was not only his request, yeah, but there was complete Oof. moans about him not getting supported if they didn't get that player. And he has turned out to be a disaster. So Ten Hag has been supported. Now, if he was playing those players and they were doing okay, but just not quite gelling, then you could be like, time. But they're not. Um, Arteta never got anywhere near but that. But Arteta didn't have Bruno Fernandes and Rashford level players in his squad when he walked through the door. Well, he had no, Aubameyang. Who else did he have? He had, he had Arteta, Aubameyang and Lacazette all in decline and were terrible. Yeah. We had Ozil who was also in decline and terrible. Bro, we had when when Uzi, Ozil was gone. When, when you look Uzi, at the jobs Mustafi, that Arteta's done, Socrates, it's not comparable. Kolasinac, Bellerin, like these are not these are not the guys. So uh, he's had to rebuild the whole team from scratch, which he's done, and he's been uh, supported. But he wasn't supported like that in the first year. He managed to win a trophy in his first year, just like Ten Hag. So Ten Hag spent the same amount of money in his first full year as Klopp had in eight years. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah but then see, we're missing that context again, though, because the f back then players didn't cost what they cost now. Ah, uh, the, uh, no, they did. When Klopp came, brother, what are you talking about? That was like 10 years ago. Like, Listen, what, the, the, that was like 2014. The, market, the market's gone potty right no, but now. That's not 2014. We're talking about throughout his whole career. Who? So, Klopp, you, so basically, Klopp, you, Klopp has also so, been managing so in the same period as for Ten Hag. 400 million, you should be able to build a competitive team. With no, you're not, you're not deep in what I'm saying. Klopp would have done it. The going rate of an average player right now is 50 million. Like, we just paid 50 million for Brennan Johnson. Yeah, we don't 55, even spend but the point 55, about we don't even spend that, that money. I'm saying players just cost that amount but Klopp has also been managing in this time frame and he's still at the same amount spent as Ten Hag though yeah. no 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 like, but I'm, I'm saying for Ten Hag because of where it is now where the market is right now right you go out and buy three average players right now you're looking at about 130 million for three I know, but okay if, if players and, if Ange spent two, 420 million pounds yeah and he, your team was worse than it is now. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't be happy. Of course, I wouldn't be happy. Exactly. I, no, no, so but I'm you've not, got, you've got I'm the not money. No, but I'm not. I'm not arguing against that. I'm just strictly saying that this money thing. They've spent a lot of money more than other clubs, 100. percent But that's just the way the market is now. I know, but, 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 it, it, but it is to a the extent. But what you're saying is, why is Ten Hag getting more pressure than Arteta? And what I'm saying is, he's just had way better foundations to build off of. Yeah. And he's also been given way more money than Arteta. Who, why why it, were the foundations better? Well, they, more, they were a better. They players. had far better players. I've just said Bruno Fernandez and Marcus Rashford. Ronaldo were, was there, and he's, we're, he's gone 20 Ronaldo, 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 Ronaldo was, man. We're not but, taking but, a foot. But more so, they had been in the Champions if, League if, a lot more recently than. Yeah. The if you look at the individual value. Of the amount that each player was signed for compared to what Arsenal had, it isn't comparable on any level. I feel and like then, their squads were similar. They well, were in, in terms of their where they were uh, finishing in the league, you know, it was similar around no, that type period well, no, of time. You just said we finished eighth, eighth and fifth. So clearly and where not. were Man United finishing around those times? They're like one second, second place. Yeah, with Oli, one That's second a big place finish. To but what, yeah, but what about other um, leagues and the other seasons? They weren't finishing well. They weren't doing well. I think you're they, they haven't point been. About they haven't been good really since Ferguson left. Let's be real. Yeah. They haven't been good. They haven't had like this solid foundation since Ferguson left. Part of that is because of bad managers, though. Part of that is because of bad managers. We can't, we can't managers. sit here and just be like they haven't been good when they finished second. But twice. have they? But did you say and they were good? Were, were they good teams? Were they good teams? for Cup. They won the League Cup. Were what, they what good teams, though? That's what I'm asking you. Were they good foundations? They weren't, though. These were not good teams. We can't like, just like even control even, our arguments. No, but it's a fact, though. We watch football. Like Sometimes it's about using your eyes as well. Like The reality is, I'm looking at this Man United, right? Since Ferguson left, for me, they have not been Man United. They haven't reached the levels. That second place finish behind Man City under Mourinho, that was like... I don't know what that was. It's kind of like what you were saying a minute ago about them being the best shit worst team. I don't know how they did that because they. I watched them that season. Their football was terrible. They won the Europa League. They were ter they were terrible though. Who did they play in the final? Ajax. 
Or I something like that. I can't even remember. I, I think they might even play Ten Hag in the final. I can't remember. I just think Man United haven't been levels for a while now. And maybe the foundations might have been slightly better than Arsenal's foundations when Ten Hag came in. They still had McTominay and, and Fred in, in centre of the park. Who was at centre back? Maguire and uh, who uh, else? Are, are you saying that... A decline in De Gea in goal. Just, just to get the, you, what, what your point is, though. Like You think that Ten Hag should be given more time. Yes. Yeah. And I think that's a fair... Like, I think look, he earned it based on the on, on last season, last season yeah. what he achieved last season. But the biggest criticism, like I keep saying I've had about Ten Hag, is that I don't see a style of football that Man United, that I like, and I don't think Man United fans like. Like, what are you going to keep playing this kind of football? They're not even entertaining to watch. Mate, I've never They've seen... They've scored three goals and, and it was shit. I've never seen a team win 3-0 like this and still actually probably and, be the worst team. And also, none of us are sitting there thinking like, oh, that's really good. We just don't get it. We're just sitting there thinking... <laughs> I'm not afraid. Do you know as, as an opposition fan, we're neck and neck with these lot. We want yeah. to uh, obviously get top, um, we're getting the Europa League spots or Champions League, depending on where we are. I should be looking at them now going 3 0, fuck me. These are... And in, in my head, I'm just like, I don't know how they keep doing this because they're not actually playing well. But fair play, like you've stuck the ball in the net, you have got that quality. But what happens when you keep playing like you've played against Everton, Burnley, Fulham terribly, mm. but you're actually in front of a good side? Yeah. How does that go? We're going to find out, and what? that's when we'll really get a bit more of an idea of how this season's going to pan out for Ten Hag, because it does feel like it could go tits up at any also, moment. You look at how stacked the top ten in the Premier League is now, right? Mm. Every single team in there fall into that bracket of a good side. Yeah. So we're not just talking about when they come up against City and Liverpool and Arsenal. We're talking about Brighton. We're talking about Villa. Yeah. We're talking about Spurs, yeah. who they've already lost to this yeah. season. We're talking about Chelsea, even in a couple of weeks' time. So actually, there's that many teams in the league now that you're going to class as a good side. That it's like, well, if you're not putting in performances and getting wins in those matches, it's going to stack up, and eventually mm -hmm. you're going to fall from grace a little bit of where you're sat in the league at the minute. Are yeah. we going to find out on December second? Who's got the better team? Yeah, United versus Newcastle. That is a that is a huge game. If United beat you. That is going to change everything, isn't it? Well, it'll, that's it, going to change a lot of opinions. United, United, it, United, it'll, huh? it'll swing it in their favour. <laughs> and like, let's be honest, I'll be fucking sick of my life if we do because <laughs> our B team fucked them up at Old Trafford a couple of weeks ago and it wasn't even hard. And, and mm. we absolutely washed them. Um, so I would be really disappointed. But with Champions League football and with our um, injuries, my worry isn't about them, it's how tired are we. Because if, if we've got a fresh squad, I think we smashed them. But I, I don't know what the hell, like, because when we went out against fucking, um, what was it, the Brentford game or Bournemouth? Mm. Sorry, Bournemouth. Bournemouth. We, we were out on our fucking feet before we even mm. stepped foot on the pitch. It was, um, the minute I seen us take a few jogs, it was like, we're getting fucked today. Have you um, got any players back for that game? I have no idea because yeah. our injuries keep getting worse. We've just lost Joe Willock again, yeah, which is that. a shocker. Good player. Um, and uh, for him, I worry about his career now because when you come back and you're like, hi, bye like what the fuck are we dealing with here like are we got your crock on my hands like I don't I think going off your performance yesterday even if you haven't got a fresh squad you still probably smash them yeah. you think so I, yeah. I think this is the that's the one thing that Man United can't stand is someone that works really really hard Yeah, it's not really the tick attacker like getting like we beat them but we didn't absolutely smash them so I think they can go toe to toe with teams that play around them that way but I think a hard working drilling team like Newcastle so, we'll right, let's be honest. Newcastle as a team, we work harder than them. I think we play better football than them. But individual brilliance, Manchester United seem to have something that maybe, you could argue, maybe we don't in terms of the amount of money they've spent on individual superstars. Um, we just haven't spent anywhere near that level of money. So, should we do a combined 11? Yeah. Uh, we're going to start off <laughs> like in, it. in goal. I can't wait. For now, this. obviously I'm biased, but I'm, I've got a table full of people who can keep mm -hmm. me right here, right? Um, in goal, Pope versus Onana. I'd go Pope. I think more, based on this season, proven, Pope, not, Pope would be fair. I'm not yeah. even on about this season. I'm, I just think mm, mm, if you want a goalkeeper to do a goalkeeper's job, I get the games involved in playing out from the back and whatnot. Onana was play, uh, brought in to play out from the back. Okay, you can say what you want about him not having the front line in front of him that allow him to do so, but he hasn't been great at playing so, out from so, the back. But, but, I'd go Pope, safe pair of hands. But Onana was bought for 50 million this summer. Mm. Pope was bought for like 10, not even, I think. Well, so, more, more for Man United. Then. But if we're not <laughs> going on price tag though, we're just going on who yeah, we would no, start. No, I'm just putting that across. I would still go Pope. Yeah. Anyone? Anyone say Onana? I think you can definitely make an argument to say that Onana, Onana in the modern game is, uh, is a better goalkeeper all round. But I think that, would, that is harsh on Pope. So I'd, I'd personally go for Pope. Pope. Yeah, let's go Pope. Okay, yeah. okay. Left back. You got Luke Shaw. 
Mm. versus Dan Burn. Dan Burn or Tino Livramento. To be honest, I think Luke yeah. Shaw's... Luke Shaw. He's starting Luke for Shaw. England, right? Like, you know, as much as I love big Dan Bourne, and I do think Livramento is... I like Livramento. I, th I think Livramento is better than Luke Shaw right now, but no one's going to agree with that. Mate, but Dan I, I, Burn I, I, gives I, I, blood, sweat and tears for Newcastle this, every this week, and you're letting, it, you're letting Luke Shaw get in that starting level. You, you let... That was a walkover. That was easy. No, no, I'm 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 Come on, man. I think we're Shaw. already doing this in a biased way, yeah, because we're destroying the philosophy of Newcastle to facilitate this merged 11 Newcastle would if they had a choice between Shaw and Burn, they would pick Burn. I don't know though no because he's 6 foot 4 and he, they use him yeah but the reason why you're so hard to score against is because of me uh, let's, like, hey, let's just, Luke do, Shaw's let's just got do this 11 like a record number of England caps right? I, I can't justify it to anyone who's not a Newcastle fan mm. really um, I'm going Luke Shaw all right. get it if you get it I Luke think. Shaw right back Trips. Trips, easy. Yeah, trip. yeah. uh, central defenders, you've got a, a combination of Lindelof, Maguire, Varane, or um, Botman, Shaw, or LaSalle. Martinez. I'll take Bo Martinez, Bo sorry. This is, Bo this is the Martinez. one which, which doesn't sit well with me because I know that everyone's going to end up agreeing that Martinez gets in there. I would go Botman, Schwa uh, Botman Shaw. I'd go Botman and Shaw. Well, are, are we building a team or are we building a eleven? This is what this is a different. This is a different objective. Well, building an eleven that's got the best chance the, of winning the match. We're choosing best individuals here. So who would you who would you rather have centre backs for Martinez? Who would you rather have? Botman and Martinez. No... Yeah, I'm going with Botman and Martinez. All right, I think that's fair. Botman and Martinez. So we got one a of World each. Cup winner in there. Um, yeah, it'd be nice. So right now Newcastle are winning based on the goalkeeper. We've shared the defence half and half. Uh, central midfielders. Uh, We're doing four three three, by the way. Yeah, we'll do four three three. All right. All right. Um, we, well, Bruno Fernandez is probably getting in there, isn't he? So Bruno, Kimmer. Bruno, Joe Linton. Oh, I don't mind that. Bruno, Bruno, Joe Linton. Yeah. That's that's it. Yeah, that's. My what point. about Casemiro? No, Bruno, Bruno, Joe Linton. Kobe Mayno. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> he had a good game today. What, no uh, one, did no one, Mason Mount? Mason Mount. Yeah. Uh, Mason Mount? No, no, no. He doesn't get in this team. No, no. I, I, I want Scott Johnny McTominay. The way these lot get onto their formal, ch formal I, I Chelsea I like Scott is so funny, though. Though. No. You look, no. I, you hate them. I, I to be fair, win. McTominay has actually turned his season around, and yes. I will give him credit. I don't give a lot of Man United players credit, but he's actually stood up for them recently. Yeah, yes. I mean, he's a future Newcastle United legend as well. So, you know. <laughs> um, <laughs> we have to give credit to McTominay because also he's been very good in the international level. Like he's, He was up there, the top goal scorers for Scotland yeah. in, in, the, in, in the qualifiers. So, <gasps> oh, wow. Was All right, so going again. Bruno Fernandes, Bruno Gimmerish and Joe Linton. Yep. Yeah, I'm not mad at All right, that, yeah. front three. It's Marcus Rashford. Um, Anthony Gordon. Anthony Gordon, maybe uh, you've got uh, Wilson. Anthony, obviously. Isak, Anthony. You've got Garnacho. Isak, Hoyland, and probably Rashford still over Anthony Gordon. I'd appreciate. I, I like your argument for him, but player upon player, I'll take. I'll take. Who you're Rashford. gonna take? I would go because Joe Linton's gonna look after that left hand side of midfield. Do you know what? I'd go Rashford, <laughs> Isak, Anthony Hoyland. Gordon at the moment. I'd go him over Hoyland. Really? Well, if you're gonna start someone as the nine, I'd say Isak is. Definitely better. Hoyland don't Hoyland. even have a Premier League goal. Hoyland don't have a Premier League goal. So True. you're going, you're going, Isaac is the number nine. And I think either side of him, you're going Rashford. And I'm picking that on what he's done and not just current form. And then the other side, on current form and what I think he can do, I'm going Anthony Gordon. Yeah, maybe. Okay. Do you know what it is? Callum Wilson's actually got a shout before Hoyland. Yeah. If you're talking about goals per game, it's not even close that. Mm. Just the injuries with Wilson. But in terms of actually, I mean, look, Hoyland's potential is massive. But right now, mm. I feel like. With the players I've named, people have think I'm really arse licking Newcastle here, but I'm actually being completely nah, honest. I, think I would go right. Isaac, I'd go Rashford in there because I know what he can do when he hits form, and I'd go Anthony Gordon. Yeah, I, I would go Wilson, Isaac, Rashford. Uh, after the stats, I just went up on the board, so no one's talking about Ganacho, nah. Nah. in that nah. front three. I reckon Ganacho, I just don't think he's as he's good as raw. Anthony mm. Gordon yet, um, and I don't know if he ever will be. Like... Anthony Gordon's got five goals and three assists in 10, uh, 10 or 11 games this season. Yeah. And it's not just, a, a, not just giving that. He tracks back. He sets the tone for the team. If anything, I think he's in the top three most important players for Newcastle because everything's tempo, tempo, tempo. You, and what, you Gaffey, what Gaffey are you having in the dugout? Yeah. Oh, fuck me. Uh, Eddie Howe. Um, <laughs> but, Tindall, right. Tindall, I, Tindall, I, I'd go for. I agree. I think Gordon, <laughs> Gordon Rashford and Isak is the on merit the fairest front three? 
No, but think about it. Like, if you're talking about putting the ball in the back of the net, would you not want Wilson in there? Like, what, you talk about Wilson's no, re goal record. You talk about his expected goals. You talk about how often he gets the ball in the back of the net. That's why I'm going Wilson. I think you're all being a Do bit you know what? disingenuous. If, if we're talking about the ceiling of players... No, we're talking about right now. We're talking about right now in the Premier League. Right now. Yeah, but then you have to play him out of position. If we're playing right now, Rashford's not even in there. Because That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. So if you're going to put him in there, you go him instead of Rashford. But I don't think you play him out of position. Because so far in this team, there might be other players that if we played him a little bit out of position, we could get him in. But so far, we've put everyone in their sort of positions. Isak has played on the wing very comfortably. Let's base it on actual positions then, because it does simplify things. What do you mean? Well... Yeah, but are we talking about... And this is the next thing, though. Are we talking about form or are we talking about... 50-50. Who would you rather be it's playing for Spurs tail. right now? If, if there were no players in Spurs right now, who would you want front, front three. three out of those, out two, those two teams? Uh, out of those two teams, yeah. i pick Hoyland then, to be fair. Based on what? Champions I, League goal. Not over Isak. Over Isak? No way. What on the guys? No, no, no. Isak was on my wing with uh, Rashford. Yeah, we're saying... We and Hoyland for the middle. We're yeah, yeah I'm, I'm taking them. I'm doing that. Hoyland, Isak and Rashford. Score off! I was going to swear. Jesus Christ. Scoring You're taking goal. Hoyland over Anthony Gordon over Callum Wilson. Through the yeah. middle, yeah. yeah. If we're playing true to position, like and you it, just and said. If, well, if, if, if we're playing if true to position, well. Isak is a number nine. Does he play through the middle for you? All the yeah, time, all the every time. week. He is a number okay, nine. Okay, then, all right. If we're playing true to position, then it's Isak. Yeah, it's got to be Gordon Rashford. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but I'm 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 not I'm putting him on the wide end until he gets a bit more bulky. <laughs> Shut up! I, I, no, I'm I'm kind of at you like the if you could have Isak, you'd bite your hands off for a hundred million for Arsenal right now. Oh man, you would. Yeah, I would. Do you we know what it is? Yeah. He, he, You're in for it. That, that's not that's not a no. We weren't. We were. That was not you a big wanted. statement to be making though. To be fair, we got Inketia and an injured. No, I'm Jesus. just saying. For me, Isak's one of the best footballers in the Premier League. Oh god, here we go. No, look at the numbers. Look at the numbers though. The stats don't lie. This ain't biased, mate. Uh, he's he he's the real goals. Deal, Has he ever played 10 games in a row? Yeah. Yeah, yeah for when? sure. When? Uh, last he's season, one of the best season. players in the league, you reckon? Oh, no, not, not, not this season. He did get a knock this season, but last season he did. Oh. I hear your point, though. I am worried about the brittle thing. He's a bit brittle. He, he, he is a bit slim. I do want to see him put some muscle on. Is he better than Jesus? Is he better than Jesus? Would you uh, have him up front? Would he be hard. more? Would he be, you know what? Would he have more end product than Jesus in uh, Arsenal team? Yes. I don't know. I don't know. He Isaac, would. Isaac's he would miles ahead of Jesus. I don't know. I don't know if he's miles ahead of him, but he would. I, I don't. I don't think he could start for us up front. That is insane. Wow. No, no, nine nine games, because, seven goals in the if, Premier League. If you're going on about an all-round no, 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 game, I course. might see a bit of an argument with Jesus. But if you want a number nine to do a number nine job, I, I, don't, I, think I don't think Arsenal ahead. would ever Lightly make sense ahead. for just a number nine. We'd have to change the way we play. And that's the fundamental difference. So as we play right now, someone that comes deep. It's a bit like the Bobby Firmino argument, where it's like, I get mm -hmm. why people slated him, but you need, he was so important to that front three. And he made both of those other two players look good. The reason why yeah. Martinez and Saka get so many goals is because of what, He's, so then why are we stuck. talking about, why is everyone talking about you guys needing a real number nine? Then? Yeah, okay. so, Mainly because of his Tony. injuries, to be honest. So just to recap, Nick Pope. Yep. Stop us if you disagree with anything. Luke Shaw, Botman, Martinez, Trippier, mm -hmm. midfield of Bruno Fernandez, Bruno Gimmerish, Joe Linton. Yep. Front Bruno. three, yep. Anthony Gordon, Isak and Rashford. Yep. Yeah. This is, it wasn't mine though. And Eddie Howe. You said you out. wanted Hoyland in. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but I said I wanted Shaw in if, instead of Martinez. If you could move players around, but we're sticking to the actual positions of wide man, wide man, striker. So, the, so, so when when Callum and Isak are both fit, who starts? Isak. Mm. In 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 against yeah. PSG. Isak starts. Right, okay. That's how you know it's big guns tonight. All right. um, Good to know. But the game is over. We've got um, Manchester three United points, players looking goals. very happy, especially God can I Can I make a special request that we just say nice things about Man United because they won 3-0? I what really, nice really like uh, God Nacho's hair. I thought that <laughs> Ten Hag's hat really suited him that he Actually, wore today. And I would bad. like to see him with more hats, different... Different yeah. horses but, but for different But this time, horses, on the touchline. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think for Man United, this is a great day's work. You go away to Goodison, three points, three goals, clean sheet. So Maguire's happy. They get Rashford on the score sheet. They somehow get Anthony Martial on the score sheet. And they get a goal of the season contender. Mm. Or looks like... And I, I, like, the fact, the I like the fact that, you know, Harry Maguire, Johnny Evans, Anthony Martial, all the all the Ten Hag boys are turning up for him this year. And I've I got to give him credit there. Yeah. Shout out to Scott McTominay. Yeah. Unfortunately, didn't get his move away when Ten Hag wanted him out of the door. Yeah. Spent all that money on Mason Mount to come in, be the number seven. Didn't quite work out, mm. but we got McTominay pulling up trees. Well done. Uh, also, way, also, another shout out for Kobe Maino again. Because yeah, this is his first ever good. start academy player. I feel like Kobe and I think he did well. No, 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 no. Well, 
<laughs> no, no, he don't. He don't. He don't. But one of my good friends, that's he his little rubber. Well. Oh, okay, cool, sick. Yeah, no, so he's done no, well. I'll try him, man. He, so like, he did see play him. well. Yeah, that's his first start for Man United in, in a Premier League game. He did well. Yeah. What I said he made a goal line clearance. Even as bad as I think Man United have been at times in this game, you're, you're bang on. Like winning ugly away from home is great. If if it was a one off, it's not. It's all we see from them, and that's my, that's my only point of like, at some point, a style of play needs to develop, and they need to start winning and looking good while doing it, mm. so that it becomes believable that uh, this is going to happen yeah. long term. Um, it's, it's difficult to win 3 nil and not entertain anybody at the table. And they've managed it. <laughs> yeah. really, but I'll give Garnacho credit. He, he was is the, the exception. That was the that like, was yeah, that was the exception. Thanks for that. that was a fun Can we say it was an ugly win if they win 3 nil? Yeah, that, still a little bit. That's yeah. why it's weird. That's yeah. why we're saying it's Mate, weird. Come on, we beat Tottenham four one, and everyone was saying, "Ah, oh, I didn't do a very good job." Tottenham of it. Like, were the real winners. Sure, I yeah, said yeah. That surely, surely you can call that an ugly win if we don't get no credit for the. Mate, you know, Man United that have was got zero, zero goal <laughs> difference and they're six, man. It's zero absolutely insane. Zero goal difference. What yeah. is That's going hard on? to do, man. Oh, man just, United eight points. Look, ahead Newcastle of got plus seventeen next to them. Yeah. yeah, they're going to be ahead How, of Spurs going? Like very this table. soon. Could, though, yeah, grab well, it? mainly oh, because we got um, City next week. Yeah, who Man United got next? Luton Town, by the so way. We're gonna, are so we're going to drop below. Away. No, we're not because yeah. we're, we're still four points Let, ahead. Let's, of them. let's give Luton some credit. What, what Luton are pulling away. And, and I said, right, before a ball was kicked, I said it, Josh, and I said they're going to stay up on the last day of the season by the skin of their think, teeth. Yeah. They're getting through on vibes. The home form's going to be massively important for them. And I think out of those promoted sides, yeah, we knew Sheffield United were going to be a bunch of duds, but yeah. we looked at Burnley. I looked at Burnley and I said, the they might be one of the best teams to come up. They might finish 11th. Yeah. I was an idiot. They're rubbish. They're and Luton Town, Luton Town, for those boys down there, are smashing it. Let's spare a thought for Vincent Company, though, because mm. for him, it's not quite hard enough, apparently. Mm. I don't know if you've seen that quote where he, yeah, they said, you find it harder. He went, nah, I thought it'd be harder, actually. Mm. And yet they've just hit a new record in the Premier League <laughs> of the first team to come up and lose six home games in a row. Um, He's there to break records. I do think it, it was a weird moment. It was like very David Brent of like, no, nah, I thought it'd be harder actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> and, for a plan. And I do think that uh, <laughs> because he's a bit of a media darling and people have these great memories of him, he's getting treated very respectfully. Yeah. Even though he's having an absolute nightmare. Um, he, was, he, was, he was a guest at Arsenal randomly at the end of last season. Yeah. I was looking at that. I was like, what's going on? See, Arteta Because there, there was rumours. Someone, some idiot on Twitter was saying that uh, Arteta might go to Real Madrid or something. And I saw him in the stand literally the, next, the following Saturday. I wasn't happy. We don't want uh, him. Just to be mm -hmm. clear. We like you as a person. Come for dinner, but don't manage me. <laughs> Come for dinner, but don't yeah. stay. Don't manage my club. Thank you very much. Thanks. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to wrap it up there. Big thanks to the lads. Don't forget to check out all of their reviews on their own channels. Big thanks, boys. And we will see you on the next one. Cheers. <laughs>